Washington. And today the Dolphins meet the Colts at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. And in just a moment, we'll be joining Colt broadcasters Chuck Thompson and Vince Bagley for the description of today's game. A reminder, this broadcast is authorized and the rights granted by the Dolphins, Colts, and the NFL and is intended solely for the entertainment of the AFRTS listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written permission of the Dolphins, the Colts, and the National Football League is prohibited. And a titanic battle expected today. A win by the Baltimore Colts, the big surprise of the NFL this season, brings them into a tie with the uh, Miami Dolphins for first place in the American Football Conference Eastern Division. Then all they'd need is a victory next week to cop the title. Let's go join Chuck Thompson at Memorial Stadium. moment we are having technical difficulties hopefully they will be straightened out in a moment or so and they are now let's go join chuck thompson situation of the baltimore colts well they're for real they're uh, doing a great job their defenses to come on strong especially their front four they put a lot of pressure on a quarterback offensively burt jones he's backed up by marty domery's idell mitchell their offensive line is a fine offensive line they've got good receivers has done a great job with this football team. They won seven in a row. And for your Miami Dolphins, what's the key to winning this crucial game? Well, not to make the mistakes that we made against them in the game down there. We had a 14 to nothing lead, and then we made a lot of uh, offensive errors. And then in the second half, they did a good job of controlling the ball against us. They won against us up front, and we can't let that happen again. And now, Coach Ted Marcher brought up briefly your evaluation of this Miami club. Uh, the Miami Dolphins, Dave, are a very strong football club. They, they have no weaknesses whatsoever. Uh, they can beat you in so many ways, offensively, defensively, special teams, and uh, it's going to take a total team effort for us to be able to beat them. How do you plan to beat the Dolphins this afternoon? Well, I, I think really that's about it. For us to win, we have to play a, a good football game. But I think the most important factor about it, though, Dave, is that uh, it's in our hands that we can win by playing good football. We don't need a su superhuman effort. Thanks, Ted Marchabrota and Don Shula. This is Dave Humphrey with the coaches. Now back to Chuck Thompson in the booth. Thank you very much, Dave, and thank you, coaches Shula and Marchabrota. Vince Bagley with Chuck Thompson at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, and along with our sizable cold network this afternoon, Vince, we're indeed very proud and privileged to be able to broadcast with you. American Forces Network uh, all around the world. Better than 300 stations will be hearing our broadcast this afternoon. We hope that the football game will be as good as all of them want it to be. Well, Chuck, we uh, certainly share the sentiment. And in three hours, we uh, will have a verdict. And for the rest of the year, maybe until next cold season, people will be talking about it. But I can't remember. I have chills up and down my spine as I talk to you right now. I hope I settle down. Got a right to a solid free game meal. <laughs> Ready for just a great afternoon. All of the people are back. Bill Gaddis is back. One of the great Colt rooters who goes around and, and hoping everybody will give him a C and an O and a so forth. The big wheel, he's come on lately, but he's been a factor. He's in the upper deck and there's not an empty seat in the building. Vince, there are so many things to be said about the resurgence and the, the turnaround of the Baltimore Colts of 1975, but I think we'd be remiss if we didn't say a little bit about the Baltimore Colts fans for years. This has been one of the better pro franchises in the history of the game. And then it, uh, it kind of dwindled. It more or less uh, kind of fell apart. You could say the wheels came off the cart. But today we may be sitting on in on the birth of a love affair. Baltimore has again fallen in love with their Baltimore Colts. And they're now being introduced. And if you want to hear some enthusiasm and hear why this park has been called an outdoor insane asylum, just listen. coach have come of age. This is not a fluke football team. They did not accidentally put together seven games in a row victoriously. They did it by playing very good football. If there is one of the things that could hurt the Baltimore Colts today, perhaps as much as anything else, it would be the fact, Vince, that as youngsters, perhaps they might be a little bit too high. That's right. Right now, you have to concern yourself that they don't hurt each other. Right. As each grabs the uh, introduced member as he comes to the side. And this, you know, this is what it's
thought about Vince Bagley a moment ago, a solid professional broadcaster, feels exactly the way I do. It's been a few years since we've seen this happen in Baltimore, and the broadcaster who can sit up here and look at this and say he is not excited, he is not affected about it, shouldn't be sitting up here. Well, I tell you, if I have any adrenaline, it's flowing right now, Chuck, and I know you feel the same way. I certainly do. It's, a, you know, a privileged broadcaster to work for a good football club, and this is a good football club. But how about fellas like Bagley and Thompson, and there are quite a few others in this fine city of Baltimore, who saw the Colts come on to World Championships years ago and are sitting around hoping that perhaps it can happen again. Well, this year, 1975, the Colts are as close as they have been in many, many years. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in the city that gave birth to one of the great songs in the history of mankind, it is with a great deal of pride I call your attention to the singing and playing of our national anthem. kickoff in just one minute. Well, if the Dolphins, as we said at the moment, holding a one-game lead in the AFC, are able to take this game, they will win their fifth straight division title. The Colts, meanwhile, are riding their seven-game winning streak, and as we have told you, would move into that first-place tie with a victory, but they will be eliminated from postseason play if they lose. More the more will be the division champion if these two teams are tied at the end of the season. The Dolphins meet the Broncos next week, and the Colts play the Patriots. Both teams are at home. The reason being that the Colts would win is since they would have defeated the Dolphins twice in head-to-head -head competition. Baltimore won the first game November 23rd, 33-17, as both quarterbacks, Miami's Bob Greasy and the Colts' Burt Jones, left the game due to injuries, and backup Morty Domeres led Baltimore to the victory on the ground. Miami leads the overall series 8-4. Don Strzok, the third-string quarterback until Greasy and Earl Morrow were injured, led Miami to a victory over Buffalo last week, 31-21, to eliminating the Bills from the playoff spot and a possibility for postseason play. Like so many young people the world over, all they ask for is a chance. Well, the Baltimore Colts football team, a young football team, all they have asked for is a chance. Today, they have that chance. If they win, they can go on. If they lose, their season is over. No team can ask for any more than that. Well, they certainly earned it, Chuck. They earned it beginning with a, a great stretch run beginning in New York. When they defeated the New York Jets, they won seven in a row since then. They won the toss in the 13th meeting between these two teams. They will receive, I thought maybe, Chuck, in this kind of a tense ball game, they give the ball up, first of all, to let Miami make a mistake. Themselves, but that gives them possession, and they don't want that. That's exactly right. You probably will kick it off. Bruce Laird is down on the goal line waiting for it. You probably hits it pretty good. Laird up to the ball to Moore. It's all at the five, and he's coming up now. To the 10. Now 15. Now 20. 25. On the feet, 30. 35. Penalty flag down. Laird in the clear at midfield. And it's going to be pulled down to the Dolphin 40 yard line but a penalty flag way back upfield at the Baltimore Colts 20 yard line and when you see that usually it indicates clipping on the return and I guess that's the thing that you worry about you worry about the emotion come out and hit somebody they say as soon as you hit somebody you're all right everybody feels better the game has begun but the blow has been delivered illegally back around the 21 yard line and this will nullify a brilliant return by Bruce Laird which is carried all the way to the 43 in Miami territory and Baltimore will have to start from deep inside its own 15 at the 11. 
And Colts ball first down at about their own 11-yard line. The clipping penalty against the Colts on the kickoff return. Laird hurdled would-be tacklers at the 30. Broke clear and was pulled down by Tim Foley at about the Miami 44. Baltimore Jones is starting at quarterback. He's got the sore ribs, all of you know, I'm sure. Baltimore comes out of an eye formation, holds the front man, Lydell Mitchell, the deep man in the eye, double flankers to the left side, Roger Carr and Glenn Dowdy. They stay in the eye, no, now out of the eye in motion, back toward his backfield, Dowdy, the gift to the second man, Mitchell, hit at the line of scrimmage for absolutely no gain. Moving in was Vern Den Herter, one of the two very capable defensive ends of the Miami Dolphins, to make the tackle and assisting on the play, the linebacker, Roan. We notice the pluggers, which they call those linebackers, lined up Chuck directly behind the down lineman. Now, maybe that was just for that play, but it's tough to tell. They can stunt really off the down lineman and make it difficult for your blocking assignment. Let's see if they stack that way this time. Against the Bills, the Dolphins used a three-man set, a four-man set, and a five-man set defensively. In motion through the backfield of the far sideline, Glenn Dowdy. Uh, eye formation behind quarterback Jones, rolling out to his left, running with the ball. Jones is coming up to the 15 and going out of bounds. Bert Jones, uh, I'm not sure what the play was designed that way, but he had just turned and rolled to the left and came up to about the 15-yard line, and the Colts are coming up to one of those big third downers. He came off the weak side. I kind of think it was designed, Chuck, and yet they don't want Bert running around out there. He was running for the sideline, and the blocker upfield, uh, Dowdy, I guess the wide man, delivered a block as if he knew what he was doing from the outset of the play, so I think they had it figured out that way. Perhaps they were just advertising a little bit. Miami, don't go to sleep. This fella can still run. Third down five. Baltimore at their own 14. Standard pro set backfield. No man directly behind the quarterback. Dowdy wide right. Car wide left. Take away by Jones. Hand off to Olds. Olds straight ahead up over the 15 to about the 16 yard line and he is smothered there by a good defensive effort on the part of again the defensive uh, end and Herter and also helping on the play was Randy Crowder the defensive tackle. So we come up to a kicking situation. Fourth down and the ball at the 17 will make it fourth down in about three or just a short two if you will. Downfield waiting to get the uh, return is Matt Moore. He's a solo safety. The Dolphins against David Lee, the Baltimore punter, now present a 10-man front. The lone safety, Matt Moore, is about the Dolphin 48 or Miami 48 or 49-yard line. Waiting for the snap. They're going to get a rush. The snap good. Here comes the rush. It's picked up nicely. Lee gets the punt out of there. Here comes Moore up to midfield, makes the catch at the 50. Lateral along into the near side. Mike at the track back block, and down he goes at about the Baltimore 47-yard line. It looked like Bob Platt made the tackle on Matt Moore. David Lee had to, to hurry his kick because booming in there very quickly was Ernie Roan, and Roan was picked up at the last moment, Vince, or he might have blocked the Lee punt. Yes, indeed he was. He had good uh, penetration and uh, picked off by Stan White and taken out just at the last moment. Well, if there's something that Baltimore has a really reason to be very, very proud of, it's their defensive unit, and they're now on field against the Miami Dolphins. Don Strzok quarterbacking, Mercury Morris one setback, uh, in motion back through the backfield goes Solomon to the far sideline. Nottingham, the other setback, a fake, and now a pass out here to Matt Moore in the flat, and Moore down to the Baltimore 42-yard line before he is taken out of bounds, a very quick out pass, and this is what we expect Don Strzok to do all day long, a very quick releases, shallow drop passes, quick outs, he threw two touchdown passes against Buffalo last week, one for eight yards and the other for one. That got six yards. It was a good play. It had the strength going away from the uh, play where the, the ball is ultimately thrown and almost isolated more against the Colt defenders and its cornerback. Second down three of the Baltimore 41 and that quick uh, out. Twilly is wide to the left side. Matt Moore splits off on the right side. Here comes Twilly in motion through the Dolphin backfield of the near sideline. Strzok yanks it away. Fake hands off to Morris. Morris swinging around his own left end, waiting to get a block. Ducks outside. It cuts down the far sideline and it goes out of bounds around Baltimore's 37-yard line. A pretty good sweep by Mercury Morris. Dan White rode him out of bounds and the fellow who was steering him around the corner is one of the best I've seen in some time. A man by the name of Little and that's the only small thing about him, isn't it? Exactly. And Merck had his uh, hand on Little's belt. You take me where you want me, and I'll follow you. And he did a good job. Since uh, they, they, they're very close to first down yardage, the ball is spotted between the Baltimore 38 and 37. And uh, they're going to take the sticks from the near side to the far side and measure any part of the ball, and he's got that first down. And I don't know whether he picked it up or not. It's awfully close. They say no, he didn't get it. So the Dolphins show third down in inches now. The ball resting at the Colts, just inside the Colts, 38. He's the referee this afternoon. Al Conway, the umpire, headlines involve Peters. Bob Beeks is the line judge. The back judge is Jim Poole. And Pat Mallette is the field judge. For those of you listening in all around the world this afternoon, the Baltimore 
Colts have sold more tickets to this football game than any other football game in their history in Baltimore. 310 above capacity. 60,548 are here. Miami with an eye formation. And the deep man in the eye is Mercury Morris. It looks like Nottingham, the front man in the eye. Here comes uh, Matt Moore in motion through the backfield of this near sideline. The takeaway by Strzok gives it the second man Morris into the holy ghost for first down yardage to about the Baltimore 35-yard line before Fred Cook was able to finish. This this afternoon, Ben, is there are many factors that will, you know, eventually figure into the outcome of this ball game. But I think one of the most important features of the game will be the Miami offensive line against the Baltimore defensive line. Absolutely. Miami's been given good field position by the, actually, the, the, the hold of the clipping penalty and then the fact that Miami dug in and held them. But here they are digging uh, at the 35-yard line. And again, an eye formation, fully wide to the right of it. A front man on the eye, Nottingham, deep man, Merck Morris. Don Strzok quarterbacking. He rolls back, fakes, wants the throw, blitz coming. Gets, gets rid of his pass and is hit while doing so. And it's intercepted by Lloyd Mumford of the Baltimore Colts from the end zone. Mumford intercepted what was intended for Curl. defensive unit as they have so many times to stop the Dolphins again on a Mumford interception. There's a break in the action. Let's pause now for this message. Well, this is the biggest game of the day, but there are others going on. And after one period of play, no score between San Francisco and Atlanta. However, in the second period, Nick Mickemeyer, a 22-yard field goal, and the Falcons now lead the 49ers 3 nothing. In the first period, Greg Pruitt ran 11 yards for a touchdown. Don Cockcroft, the extra point to put Cleveland on top of Kansas City after one seven to nothing. And in the second period, Don Cockcroft kicked a 27-yard field goal. It's 10 nothing now. The Browns leading the uh, Chiefs. After one period of play, no details. New Orleans leading the Giants by a score of seven nothing. Also underway, but nothing to report on as yet. Buffalo and New England. Later on, St. Louis at Chicago. Green Bay will be at Los Angeles. Houston and Oakland, the Detroit Lions will entertain the Minnesota Vikings, and the Philadelphia Eagles will ta travel to Denver to do battle with the Broncos. But right now, the big defensive play is the Colts have done it so long, or so many times all year long, that interception by Lloyd Mumford, they now have it first and ten on their own 20. Dolphin game has a much bigger audience than the Baltimore Colts radio network. Joining us this afternoon is the American Forces radio network. 300 stations around the world. Our broadcast today goes to all of Europe, to Alaska, Greenland, Iceland, Japan, and the Far East. Welcome to all of the stations of the American Forces network. First down, Baltimore, Baltimore 20, split backfield, no man directly behind Burt Jones, the quarterback. Double flankers wide left, Jones gives to Mitchell. Mitchell hits the right side and is able to get through for a couple of very short yards, maybe two, perhaps three, before he is snuffed out by it looked like Ernie Rohn the linebacker on that side so Mitchell's thrust to the right side carries for three second down and seven the interception brought together two old teammates Howard Trilly uh, who was a teammate of Lloyd Mumford of course when both were in Miami that incidentally was Lloyd's fourth interception of the year Vince and the 24th Colt interception of the year second down seven at the 23 double flanks wide left Dowdy and Carr I formation old front man Lydell Mitchell the second man of the eye and uh, Raymond Chester, tight end on the right end, through the backfield of motion to the other side goes Glenn Dowdy. The pitch back to Mitchell, a sweep of his right end, makes the cut up to the 25, hit and held shy of that 25-yard line. As the quick-acting and good defensive unit of the ball, the Miami Dolphins shut Lydell Mitchell off. Uh, leading the tacklers was number 49, Charlie Babb, and they spot the football at about the 25, which means it's third down and five, and Don McCauley comes in to the Baltimore backfield. Coming out is Bill Old. The only uh, Colt not suited up and able to play today is a very valuable member of the offensive unit, Roosevelt Leak. Now uh, Jones has a third down five at his own 25 with Carr wide right, Dowdy wide left, split backfield, nobody behind the quarterback Jones. He's going to go back to throw. A straight drop set, looks, fires up the middle, caught by Raymond Chester at the Baltimore 35. And right away you look back to see if Jones is on his feet, and he is. And a gain of 11 gives him a first down at the 36. Good grab by Raymond and a little traffic. Well, the first first down of the afternoon for the Baltimore Colts. No score in case you just tuned in. Now we've got better than 10 minutes remaining. Elsewhere, Buffalo is leading New England 6 to nothing in the second quarter. New Orleans and the Giants are a 7-7 tie in the second quarter. Cleveland 10 to nothing over Kansas City in the second quarter. The 49ers 6, Atlanta 3 in the second quarter. No score in Baltimore. First down at the 36. Dowdy wide right, car wide left. Jones on first down, wants to throw. Drops it off to Chester, who drops the ball. 
Just a quick out to the uh, tight end, Chester, who just kind of floated out laterally along the line of scrimmage almost. And Jones's pass was dropped by Raymond. Second down, Chester. And Vince, it did seem that Burr Jones took a little bit of a belt after releasing the ball. And uh, he seems to be okay. If we get the opportunity, Vince, we might talk a little bit about the special protective gear that uh, Baltimore's quarterback is wearing this afternoon to protect those severely bruised ribs. Second and ten now from the Baltimore 36. Carr and Dowdy are both wide to the left side of the set, which is a standard pro set. There goes Dowdy in motion back through the backfield of the far side. Jones back to throw. A straight drop, setting up, fires a screen. Mitchell's got Mitchell 35, now 40, and about to the 42 or three-yard line goes Lydell Mitchell. And he is very angry with himself as Lydell as he tripped over the lead blocker coming out there in front of him. Number 61, Bob Pratt, was trying to help him, and Lydell tripped over Bobby and went down. He felt he should have got more yardage. The tackle credit goes to Curtis. Yeah, you know, they say they're not using a lot of things that uh, they haven't used before. Or they didn't intend to come in here with an entirely new offense or anything like that. But these little wrinkles are different. Jones are running a kind of a naked reverse. They're running at the sideline with the ball, with the flow of everybody going the other way. That screen pass to Lydell Mitchell, somewhat different than they've set up before. And the little flare that... Uh, Chester drop was a play we haven't seen lately. Third down four at the Baltimore 42-yard line. Dowdy wide right, car wide left, split the backfield. Nobody behind Burr Jones. Chester the tight end on the right end of the line. Take away by Jones. Straight drop, rolling a little bit. Wants to throw. Fakes and now tries to run out of it. Jones is running. 45-50. Dolphin 45-yard line and he flies. Jones under orders from Coach Marshall Broda went into a slide like a baseball player at the Dolphin 45 after picking up first down yardage. First wearing a protective uh, padding, as you say, Chuck. And uh, it, it's sponge, but it's, he, he's also wrapped in there. I don't think he's wearing any, any hard piece of uh, light metal or hard leather. This is sponge, which will absorb a lot of the blow. It's a, 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 something a little bit different, uh, Vince, and we can get into it a little bit if we have the time later. Right now, first out of the Miami uh, 45. I formation, give to the second man, Mitchell, into the middle, and whap, he is hit and hit good by that middle linebacker, number 56, Steve Toll. And he stopped him for hardly any gain at all, Bill Stanfield. Defensively, the Dolphin front four, two very good ends, Vern and Herter and Stanfield. And Stanfield, I think, is an excellent defensive player. And the tackles are Reese and Crowder. And uh, they've got the rookie by the name of Towell in the middle of the linebacker, Roan on one side of him. And the other guy is that no-namer, Bob Matheson, uh, as their three linebackers. Curtis Johnson in one corner. And I see they're playing Jarrett White on the other corner. Charlie Babb and Jake Scott are the safeties. Here comes Baltimore with a second down and 10 at the Dolphin 45. Standard pro set backfield, car left, Dowdy right, back to throw Jones, a shallow drop rolls. Pressure coming, Jones is trying to run away from it, and he gets away from one man, Dan Herter chasing him back at the 40. They block him. He's up over the 50 as Jones. It's still on his feet at the 45, and down he goes. So Jones, who rolled all the way back to the Baltimore 35, then was able to run it back up to the line of scrimmage, which is the Dolphin 45-yard line. Jones in plenty of trouble, and all week long, Vince Bagley and yours truly have been reading in the Baltimore papers about the rib injury to Jones, and the one thing it would not affect would be his passing, but most definitely it was said he would not be able to run this week. Uh, he ran 40 yards that time for, a, for no gain, but uh, he did go down without a blow. The thing is, Chuck, if he gets hit in the shoulder, it still jars his ribs. If he gets I, hit on the right side, it hurts on the left, where the problem exists. The way your well, cage is we've said it before, and I'm sure everybody in the listening audience has known somebody or heard of somebody at one time or another who has said that the good pros, the really good ones, are the guys who have that ability to play hurt. Jones back to throw third and ten. Setting, fires outside to Mitchell. Mitchell down to the Dolphin 40 and is racing for first down yard as he goes out of bounds around the Dolphin uh, 36, 37 yard line and not enough for a first down. Mitchell on a little bit of a flare took the pass from Jones and I don't think he got first down yardage. It's a little difficult for field goal distance. McCauley's coming in. Uh, Jimmy Kennedy's coming in. They're blockers in short yardage. This is a kind of a chancy play, Chuck. Fourth and two at the 37. But I think they're going well, for it. A little while ago, the Dolphins had uh, first and 10 at the cold 48 after a punt. If they uh, pick up the ball now, they could, uh, you know, if they don't get the first down, it'll be Dolphin ball, first and 10 at the Dolphin 37. 
And the Colts are going to go for the first down. And they come in with a standard throw setback. Here we got Lydell Mitchell. And they'll hold that, make it to Don McCauley, one of the setbacks, along behind the quarterback, Burt Jones, waiting for the takeaway. A long count by Jones. He turns, gets the holds, holds off the left side, and I don't think he got it. Holds on a veer straight ahead off the left side. Did not pick up first down yardage, and the Dolphins will take over. First down at about the Dolphin 36. And there is a timeout here in Baltimore. We'll be back in 60 seconds. A couple of other scores in the second period. Dell Williams, a four-yard touchdown run. The extra point attempt by Steve Mickemeyer blocked, and San Francisco now leading Atlanta 6-3. First period, Jones, a 16-yard touchdown pass from Jim Hart. The Cardinals trying to clinch the NFC East, lead the Bears 7-0. The American Football Conference, winner of the last three Super Bowls and sixth of the last seven, has added a second straight victory in National Football League interconference competition in its two consecutive triumphs in preseason play. Going into the 13th week of the NFL season with only four more interconference games to be played, the AFC maintains a clinching 22-14 to margin in the annual 40-game competition. In the six years of interconference games since the merger was completed for the 1970 realignment, the NFC still holds a 119-111-6 to and six edge with four games to go in 75. But the AFC has won the competition three of the last four times. One year, 1973, it ended in a tie. The NFC dominated the first two seasons in 70 and 1971. Well, today's broadcast is presented by authority of the National Football League Baltimore Colts. It is intended for the private use of our audience and a rebroadcast of today's play-by-play -play without the written consent of the Baltimore Colts and Metro Media Incorporated is prohibited. Well, the Colts' winning streak has now reached seven games. That's the longest since 1970, and Vince, we know, maybe some in our audience do not know, that season, 1970, a regular season string of seven straight was snapped by the Miami Dolphins. Don Knott has a split backfield, no man directly behind him. Knott gives to Mercury Morris, swings his own left end, cuts the corner into the open, and he's up on the 45 and pulled down at about the 47-yard line. Morris with a good sweep outside was finally hauled down by Jackie Wallace after he picks up a first down on a swing of his own left end. John Crittenden, before the uh, on the pregame show, Chuck, the kickoff shows that Mercury is much more effective on AstroTurf. He really doesn't look as quick, even on that run where he made the 11-yard gain, to be as swift as he is on AstroTurf. Wide to the right side of the set, Howard, 21st down at the Miami, the 47-yard line. Strock, the quarterback, with a long count, yanks it away, gives to Morris. Right side, darts into a little bit of a hole, and it's hot for it by Freddie Cook. And down he goes at the line of scrimmage. Fred Cook, uh, an outstanding young Baltimore uh, defensive end, makes the tackle right along the line of scrimmage. So it's Dolphin second down, still 10, Dolphin 47. No score, six minutes remaining in the first quarter. Now Mandich uh, goes out of the ball game and coming in, or rather uh, going out of the ball game is Andre Tillman and coming in is Mandich. As a tight end, Matt Moore is set out to the left side of the set split, and a flanker wide right is Twilly. Nottingham and Morris set back behind Strock on second down in motion. Twilly through the Dolphin backfield. Give to Morris coming around. Nat Moore, no, it's not Morris, it's Malone. Malone around his own right end is knocked down at the Baltimore 48 yard line as Bruce Laird came up very quickly and made the tackle. And we weren't too sure how much we would see of Benny Malone today. He's supposed to have an ankle problem, but he's one of those. Very, very deceptive type runners. He now leaves, and Boulash comes in. Solomon comes in. Larry Seifel is also in. The ball resting at the Colt 48-yard line. A gain of five. Third down and five for the Dolphins at the Baltimore 48. Solomon side of the set. Boulash, the lone man behind the quarterback, Don Strock. Third and five of the Baltimore 48. The takeaway by the Miami quarterback. He's still barking. A long count. Yanks it. Wants to throw a deep fade. Sets up. Fires down the sideline. Nat Moore can't get it at about the Baltimore 31. Incomplete forward pass. And again, the Baltimore Colts did mount a little bit of pressure. It looked like John Dutton had good pressure on Don Strock, even though they did not get to him. Freddie Cook was also there. He's a straight drop. He reminded me of Van Brocklin, the way he dropped back that time. Straight back tracking, not turning, but looking at the potential receivers at all times. And the ball is not too well thrown. Larry Seiple's first punt of the day uh, will go from my left to my right down to the Baltimore 10-yard line is Howard Stevens, a very uh, fine punt returner. His company down that way is uh, Ray Oldham and uh, 
Marshall Johnson. The snap, here comes Larry Seiples. Punt, he hits it high and deep, and the head angling for the far sideline. Stevens lets it roll. It bounces back upfield to the Baltimore 15, where it is down by one of the Miami Dolphins, Ruth Delia. And they're going to spot it down at about the Baltimore 15-yard line. And there is a timeout here in Baltimore with a score, the Dolphins nothing and the Colts nothing. Another score at Atlanta, Alfred Jenkins has got a 20-yard touchdown pass from Steve Bartkowski, and now in the second period, the Falcons have moved back ahead of San Francisco 10-6. Getting back to interleague competition for a moment, Pittsburgh is working on a 10-game winning streak in interconference play, including Super Bowl IX, in which the Steelers defeated the Vikings 16-6. The Oakland Raiders also have a streak going against the NFC with eight straight, starting with an October 7th, 1973 victory over the Cardinals. And unless they make the Super Bowl, they are finished with NFC competition for this season, having beating New Orleans, the Washington Redskins, and Atlanta in overtime. In the uh, six years of competition between the two NFL conferences, the longest winning streak has been 11 by the Dolphins from November 15, 1970 until they lost to the Redskins in 1974. Dallas won 10 in a row for the NFC. Houston never had beaten an NFC team, losing 11 in a row and managing only one tie until they defeated the Washington Redskins earlier this year, 13-10. Jones and the Colts start now from their own 14. I formation holds the front man Lydell, the second man. Start on the right to the left side and down the uh, other side to give to Lydell. Mitchell in the middle. Worms his way through and hits up over that 20 to about the 22 yard line goes Lydell Mitchell. And for WABA in Washington, D.C. and WCBM in Baltimore, we'll pause now for station identification. This is the Metro Media Baltimore Colts Football Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. At 790 and 1420, this is American Forces Radio. Second down and two for Baltimore, about at their own 22. I formation, car left side, Dowdy the right side. Dowdy in motion to the backfield to get to Mitchell. Into the middle he goes, hammering his way up over the 25 to about the 28-yard line. Into first down territory goes wide to Mitchell. Steve Powell made the tackle, among others, for the Miami Dolphins. Lydell Mitchell, the first 1,000-yard gainer in the history of the Baltimore Colts, and has become of age. Oh, my. And Mr. Pratt and Mendenhall and Collette are the last people up. So that was, Lydell, you take it up the middle, and we'll get them. And they did for a first down. The ball is spotted just a little bit ahead of the 27. First down, Baltimore. Again, the eye. This time, both Dowdy and Carr are set out wide to the left side in motion. Back toward the backfield, Dowdy. The gift to the second man, Mitchell. Bumps outside up to the 30 and is fighting his way straight ahead about to the 34-yard line. Lydell faked it inside, bounced outside, and runs it up to about the Baltimore 34-yard line. A good pickup of some seven, second down and three. says he'll take it 40 times a game if that's necessary to win it. And I think he did that once against the Jets last year. And, uh, he's headed in that kind of a direction. He likes to carry the ball so much, he even takes it home with him, I'm <laughs> sure. Uh, second down and three. The ball to the Baltimore 34. Dowdy wide to the left side of the set. Roger Carr to the right side of I formation. Holds the front man. Mitchell the second man. Motion. Dowdy back toward the backfield to turn the gift to Mitchell. He comes into the middle of the uh, uh, line and almost lost the football. And a good second effort by Lydell Mitchell recovered it. The tackle was thrown by Ernie Rohn. And Lydell almost lost that football at the 35-yard line where it's third down and two Baltimore. They've got to get about to the oh, 30, almost to the 38 uh, in order to get a first down. So it's actually third down and three. Don McCauley has gone in alongside of Lydell Mitchell in that Baltimore Colt backfield. They're in the split. No man directly behind the quarterback waiting for the takeaway by Jones. He wants to throw in third down. A fade, a fake, another throw. It is incomplete. Defending for Don McCauley. Covering on the play was the linebacker, Rowe, who got up looking all Make sure there weren't any penalty markers dropped. Yeah, he tackled McCauley, but I think Mack had touched the ball trying to make a diving catch, so it was a legal play, and David Leo got to kick with a little bit of space behind him this time. Last time he kicked it from near the end zone. And waiting downfield at about the 20-yard line, again, is uh, Nat Moore, the Miami Dolphin returner. David Lee will do the kicking for the Baltimore Colts, and again, the Dolphins will mount a rush. Ten men on the line, waiting for that snap from center. Uh, delivered by Forrest Blue. 
still waiting for the snap. There it is. David Lee's got it. Here comes the rush. He got it out of there. And again, they almost blocked it. That's coming to the near sideline. It goes out of bounds somewhere around the Miami 32 or 3 yard line. And the Dolphins go to work uh, now again at their 30, call it the 33, if you will. And later scores, Vince, that are coming in. The Cardinals 7, the Bears nothing in the first quarter. Atlanta, and there's a rejuvenated football team, leading the 49ers 10 to 6 in the second quarter. The Giants and New Orleans in a 7-7 tie at half. Kansas City and Cleveland. Cleveland 10, Kansas City nothing at the half. All ready to go. Merck Morris, Nottingham, setbacks behind Don Strzok. The give goes to Morris into the middle. He's through for a good gain up to about the 38-yard line, and maybe beyond that goes Mercury Morris. Fellow who had great speed to get outside. This time ran it right down the throat and has been pulled down by the Baltimore Colts. Jim Chayunsky uh, somewhere around the 38. Second down and five. Again, Nottingham and Morris in a split backfield behind quarterback Strzok. Wide to this near side to the right is fully the other side of Nat Moore. Back to throw goes Strzok. Pressure coming. He throws the screen. It's caught by... No, Nottingham dropped the football. Nottingham had it in the screen and dropped it. Like a basketball, he just kind of came right back up to him, but it's too late then. So Miami shows third and five at their 38. No score, first quarter, a minute 22 remaining. Again, a lot of pressure that time, Chuck, but didn't prevent Strzok from putting it where he wanted it, but not dribbled it, and that doesn't count. Third and five for the Miami Dolphins. They'll show us some different numbers in that backfield right now. Larry Seifel has come into the ball game. Matt Moore is in there. Blue Rock is in there. Solomon is also in there. They go to a double wing to the Dolphins. The only man behind the quarterback is Bulash. Third down five from their own 38 in motion. That more. The give goes to Moore on a reverse. Coming around the old right side. He is swept outside. Humphrey misses him, and then he is down. Humphrey hit him a shot and knocked him off his pins as Ray Oldham missed him. And the reverse to that more. Trying to swing his right end. Gets the ball back to the line of scrimmage. And Dolphins will again have to punt to the Colts on a fourth and five at their 38. Boy, it's a dead even game so far. No score, and they've slugged it back and forth. Colts have perhaps moved a little farther, had the interception. And no score, and it seems like it ought to be that way. All ready to go. Larry Seifel will be the putter for the uh, Miami Dolphins. Stevens waiting inside the Baltimore 20 and 25, waiting for the snap. There are also two other safety men back there with Baltimore. Here comes the snap, and Seifel almost had it blocked, but what a kick he hung up. Stevens is backpedaling to take it at the 18, up to the 20, outside, along to the 20. No, he reverses the field, going back and fell down at the 20-yard line. Stevens tried to reverse the field and go the other way to the far sideline and fell. At the cold 20, it'll be first and 10 at that spot. blocking uh, the Larry Seifel punt. It looked like Dan Dickel, and he, uh, you know, with only a, an eight-man rush, uh, they came very close to blocking Seifel's punt. Vince, we go to the final 27 seconds, and I think you said it all just a moment ago. It's a dead-even football game. It really has been two very good football teams, and uh, they have, uh, you know, the defense seems to have uh, kind of been more of a thing than offense so far down at the 20-yard line. I formation, old stunt man, deep man, Lydell Mitchell. Double flank, wide right, Dowdy and Carr. Here's Dowdy in motion through the backfield, pitch out to Mitchell, trying to swing his right end. Turns the corner, gets up to the line of scrimmage and squirts forward for now two or three yards as Miami got into the flow and closed what looked like a little bit of a hole. They closed it in a big hurry. And the tackle is made by Randy Crowler and Vern Den Herder. They played it like the big ball game it is, uh, kind of close to the vest. And the time will run out. Neither team will be benefiting by the, the wind here at the stadium. There's very little wind. So that's the end of the first quarter and the score. Baltimore, nothing Miami. Nothing. Last summer, Terry Metcalf and Jack Buck, the host of NBC TV's Grandstand, cooperated in a youth sports program sponsored by KMOX TV of St. Louis. For two months, they visited area high schools showing NFL highlight films and holding discussion groups. When asked why he thought this program was important, Metcalf said a high school student is at a stage where he's almost on his own, but not quite. It's the time in his life when he most needs a little direction. When I talked with them, I tried to relate my teen years to theirs. I tried to offer them some motivation. I talked about attitude and the desire to improve oneself. 
Well, Mr. Metcalf is improving himself with two games left. Terry is on the verge of setting a league record for combined net yardage. He has 2,335 yards and needs 110 more to erase Mac Harron's record of 2,444 yards set for New England last year. Little wonder quarterback Jim Hart says Metcalf is number one and our offensive line is number two when asked to evaluate Terry's worth to the St. Louis offense. Our concern right now is Miami and Baltimore. As we go to the second quarter in uh, Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, Vince Bagley and Chuck Thompson, we have seen a score in the first quarter. Baltimore will have its second down at eight, the ball resting at their own 23. There's quite a cold flavor to this Miami uh, football club. When you look at the head coach, Don Shula, who was a coach here in Baltimore, and then Don Dahl, the defensive coordinator, he's another former Colts coach. Schnellenberger, who coaches receivers for the Dolphins, another former Colts. Cassip, a former Baltimore Colts football player, is the offensive backfield coach. Tom Keen, a man who was the first all-pro in the history of the Baltimore Colts franchise, coaches defensive backs. And of course, George Young is a director of pro scouting for the Miami Dolphins. So they really have a Baltimore flavor, not to mention many players who used to be with Baltimore. Eye formation out of the eye. Here's Jones rolling back to throw, setting up. He fires a screen to Raymond Chester. Chester with blockers to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, and out of bounds. A screen to the tight end, Raymond Chester, and Vince Bagley. Here's something else we haven't seen before. Yeah, okay, throwing the screen to Raymond. So it doesn't look a lot different, but uh, every now and then they'll come up with a wrinkle that you haven't seen before, haven't seen lately, and that was effective. He had Coons in front of him, and uh, George warded off people in front, and uh, he was caught from the side. From the Baltimore Colts 23 to the Colts 38 yard line and a first down for the Baltimore Colts. Standard pro set backfield. Bill Olds and Lydell Mitchell shoulder to shoulder. Dowdy to the right side. Car left. Jones on first down. Watch the throw. Looks to find a receiver. Fires caught by Lydell Mitchell at the Baltimore 40, maybe three yard line. And I think when they spot it in truth will be the 44 yard line. Quick release to one of the best pass catchers the Colts have, Lydell Mitchell. So you figured Miami would come in here throwing short, Chuck. And on the other hand, Bert Jones also trying to protect him off the club trying to protect him. It's throwing short just as often as Strock is attempting it. Well, we have a second and four at the Baltimore 44. No score. We're just starting the second quarter in Baltimore this afternoon. We haven't mentioned the weather. I guess in our excitement we forgot it's just a glorious Sunday afternoon in December here in Baltimore. Sun shining. Couldn't have a finer day weather-wise. Eye formation out of the eye. Jones rolls. Gives to the second man Mitchell. He comes hammering up the middle. Does slide out to about the 47-yard uh, line of the Baltimore Colts before Bill Stanfield makes the tackle for the Miami Dolphins. A quick pickup of three, and the Colts face a third down of the yard at their own 47. And they'll send in the heavies right now to try to get it for McCauley. Mitchell comes out. Roger Carr is at the sidelines, and Jimmy Kennedy in the game. With about a yard to go. And the Dolphins have dropped one of their linebackers. Let's see what kind of a down set they will show now. It looks as though they've got one, two, three, four, and they might even have a five-man down set. That's exactly what they have. Five down. Third down on the yard at the 47. Standard throw backfield for the Baltimore Colts. Turn the gift to the man. Straight ahead goes Bill Olds to about the 49, and I think he's got first down yardage. We'd better wait for the official to verify that. From up here, it looks as though he's got it. And the official has indicated, yes, sir, first down as Bill Olds picked up the one yard necessary. Chuck, I think one thing he can say, there was some concern about emotion, the Colts being so high that they, they might make mistakes. But they make, they're, they're going to make mistakes as the afternoon moves along. But I don't think it's the tenseness of the ball game, which is... Uh, forced him to play anything but solid football up to now, except for the clip on the opening kickoff. Baltimore, first down at the Baltimore 49. Uh, Dowdy and Carr set out wide to the left side. Eye formation in motion comes Dowdy through the backfield to this near sideline. Old the front man, Mitchell the second, a roll back by Jones. Wants to throw, fires. Sideliner caught by Carr and out of bounds at the Miami 41. And that should be a first down as Carr ran the pattern designated to get the first down. yards, and that's enough. Right at the 40. They didn't want any more than that. As Chuck said, ran the pattern for the first down. He ran it at the flag and got there. And Jones just drilled it. Just inside. Yes, he has thrown the ball without any evidence of the uh, wrist problem. Uh, I'm sure it's, you know, it's probably hurt uh, like that. 
what the heck? This opportunity we may not face Jones again for some time. It's going to make the most of it. Baltimore with a first down at the Miami 41. High formation holds front man Mitchell, the second man. Hold on him. Here's the gift coming on a reverse to Dowdy. Dowdy makes a move down to the 40. Down to the 35 of the Miami Dolphins goes Glenn Dowdy. And I thought for a moment, I saw a motion, but what I saw was the step that Dowdy took to start back through the backfield to get the reverse. You look at your peripheral vision and uh Broadcasters have to have that. I thought I saw somebody on the Miami team move. And then Dowdy made the move, but as Chuck said, laterally or backwards to uh, get into the flow to get the handoff. The gain is to the Dolphin 35-yard line where it is second down four. Baltimore at that spot. High formation holds the front man. Mitchell the second man. No changes there. Dowdy is uh, in motion toward the cold backfield. The turn, the gift to the second man, Mitchell, and he is hit coming into the hole and may have picked up a yard as it looked as though that big number 74 defensive tackle Randy Crowder popped him into a pileup, and the job then was finished by the Miami Dolphins, number 59, Doug Swift. They spot the ball just about at Miami's 34, a gain of a yard, third and three. You know, when you concentrate that blocking up front to blow people out directly in front of you, quick people like Swift and Matheson also in that play coming from the side. If they aren't uh, deterred a little bit, they can get you. And that was that lateral pursuit, I think they coaches call it. Third and three at the Miami 34, wide to the left side car, to the right side, Dowdy, split backfield, nobody directly behind the quarterback, Jones, back to throw. He sets up, time, time, looking now, running, Jones is in trouble, looks to find a receiver, now starts to run, gets the block, down to the 30, out of bounds, he goes with the Miami 25. Bill Olds turned and delivered a heck of a block that enabled Burt Jones to run for the first down. Didn't he, though? Bill Olds made the play possible, Burt himself with his arm up in the air, as if he would throw the ball, threatened to throw it until he got actually past the scrimmage line and uh, took it all the way to the 25. Or 26. Just outside the 25, Vince. We've got another one of those very competent officiating crews, Vince. Never put on a yard marker. Put it in between. <laughs> now they put it where it should be, and it happens to be in between, of course. All right, now both Carr and Dowdy set out to the right side and split Raymond Chester about 15 yards off the left end of the line and split backfield behind Jones. First down, Miami 26. Take away by Jones, rolling back, setting up, looks to find a receiver, fires, caught by Carr at the 15. What a catch by Roger Carr. Gareth White, good defensive position against him, but Jones drilled it, and Roger made a stellar grab. 12 yards. Roger is going to get a little bit of a breather, comes to the sideline, and coming in to replace him is Marshall Johnson. Normally, when we see Johnson out there, Vince, the Colts go to a kind of a double wing, and they... Uh, whether or not he'll just run out of a flanker position, we'll know in a moment. No, they come out of it, and he runs as a flanker. Wide to the left side, Marshall Johnson. Wide to the right side, Glenn Dowdy. An eye formation holds the front man. Mitchell, the second man. First down at the Miami 15. Take away by Jones. Gift to Mitchell. Sets out the left side. Trying to turn the corner, and pulling into him, and they're yanking him down is that very good linebacker, number 59, and that's Doug Swift. Bob Matheson also in on the tackle over there for the Miami Dolphins. Let's change it to make it uh, Matheson who made the tackle. Swift in pursuit. Mitchell's progress is just inside the 14-yard line, and it'll be second down nine for Baltimore and the Dolphin 14. Matheson's in the league nine years. He's from Duke. They call that 53 defense after Matheson. Again, Marshall Johnson coming wide to the right side of the Baltimore set. He brings with him uh, Dowdy as a flop back to the right side. Standard pro set backfield. Dowdy in motion through the backfield of the far sideline. To take away by Jones. He's got lots of throw. Sets up to find a receiver is running. Jones starts to run to the near sideline and slides down at about the 13-yard line. Jones trying to avoid being hit by Jarris White. Went into a slide just like a baseball player would and to avoid injury, unnecessary injury, to those ribs. Jarris helped him up, all right. Jarris wants to keep the fans down the end zone off his back. So, not only that, Vince, good I've, I've really never known a, you know, a really solid, good professional team who took cheap shots. You don't win championships that way. Exactly. Baltimore faces a very important third down and eight. The ball resting at the Dolphin 13. Roger Carr is back in. Wide to the right side of the set. And 
Jones. We've got uh, Dowdy the other way. A split backfield. Nobody behind Jones. Jones rolls back. Wants to throw. Look, fires. It is incomplete. Intended for Roger Carr. And the official uh, right on top of the play rules. It was a legal contact made by Barry Hill, the defender, who hit Roger Carr before the ball got there. Carr never had a shot of making the catch. And there is no pass interference. The official rule, the hit was made in an effort to get to the football. Exactly, and that's the way it'll stand, and uh, Tony Linhart is on now to attempt a field goal directly in the middle of the park, kicking into the closed end, and it'll be from about the 20-yard line, 19-yard line. 20-yard line, meaning a 30-yard kick, and he's 5 for 7 in this area, waiting for the uh, snap to uh, holder Marty Domray. Snap, spot, kick in the air, on the way, and the kick is... It is... from 30 yards out, and there's a timeout here in Baltimore, and we'll be back in one minute. Other scores mm -hmm. pass along to you at Atlanta. Steve Mickemeyer, a 26-yard field goal, and at the half, Atlanta is leading San Francisco 10-9. And a 40-yard field goal in the first period by Jim Bakken, and after one, St. Louis leads the Bears 10-0. Other scores, no details at the half. Buffalo leading New England 13-7. Also at the half, New Orleans, the New York Giants tied at 7-7. The Pittsburgh Steelers clinched their second straight AFC Central Division crown Saturday afternoon with a convincing 35-14 victory over the second-place Cincinnati Bengals. Franco Harris rushed for 118 yards and two touchdowns, while Terry Bradshaw passed for one and ran for another. The Steelers defense also scored a touchdown, set up another, and sacked Bengal quarterback Ken Anderson four times. Cincinnati's record dropped to 10-3, and three, but the Bengals still can gain a playoff berth as the AFC's wildcard team if they beat San Diego in their season finale a week from today. More action now in the second period as we go back to Baltimore. Well, the Baltimore Colts field goal kicker, Tony Linhardt, in his first effort of the afternoon has missed from dead smack in front of the upright from 30 yards up. That's right, in a 70-yard drive... Uh up with nothing. We've taken it from the 21-yard line to around the 10 to 12. And now they have Nottingham, the front man of the eye, and Merck Morris, the second man to give to Morris, who comes through a, well, not very much of a hole, and the reason there isn't very much of a hole is Airman refused to be moved, and Jim Chayunsky got into the middle of things, and uh, John Dutton was there to help him, so the gain is out maybe to the 21-yard line, making second down and nine. Well, they spot the ball now at the 22, so we'll call it second down and eight, Miami. Merck Morris, Don Nottingham, the setbacks behind uh, Don Strzok, the uh, Miami quarterback. The third one they have been forced to use this year. The turn by Strzok to give on the draw to Morris. It opens up a gaping hole in the open 35-40, and down he goes at about the 45-yard line. Morris and some nifty blocking up front by that offensive line of the uh, Miami Dolphins. They opened a gaping hole for Mercury Morris, who runs it out, and is put down, they say, right at about the 42-yard line of the Dolphins. Call it the 43. So they caught in a blitz. Chansky was in there. And they ran a real good draw play. 21 yards. First down at the Miami 42. A standard throw set backfield behind the quarterback, Don Strzok. Waiting for the takeaway. Strzok wants to throw. Shallow drop. Looks to find a receiver. Sideliner. It is caught. And held over there by Nat Moore. And Lloyd Mumford delivered a good hit at about the 48-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. A gain of five. for the Dolphins at their own 48. No score. The only scoring opportunity was just seconds ago. And the Colts uh, tried a field goal from 30 yards out. Linhart missed it. And the Dolphins are under a head of steam right now coming from uh, their own 20 to their own 48 for it's second down and five. Fully wide to the left side of the set. Split backfield. Nobody behind the quarterback. Strzok waiting for the takeaway. Strzok yanks it away. Gives it to Nottingham trying to swing to the right. Turn the corner and flat. He got it. And got it good as it looked like Freddie Cook was there to make a very good tackle of the tough-running little Don Nottingham just out at the 48-yard line. So we'll come up to a third down and still about five at the Miami 48. These are the situations that Bob Greasy was so proficient. Third down when you had to throw the ball. More than likely they'll throw here, maybe run a draw again, but uh, 
Doc hasn't proven in this phase of his game yet. One of the things that Greasy could do in this kind of a situation was that staggered and stuttered cadence count that would really, really help. And now as Miami comes on the ball, uh, Langer, the setter, says, hold on a minute. The general says, I'd like to have a clean football, if you don't mind, and they're going to bring it in for him. Meantime, uh, we've got uh, Larry Seifel in there as a running back for the Dolphins alongside of Boulash. Both of these are very good pass catchers. Twilly is wide to the left side of the set. Matt Moore wide to the right side. Third down and five at the Miami 40 a passing down. Waiting for the takeaway by Whoops. There's movement in the Miami line. Back to throw stock and Joe Airman wraps him up back there. Uh, movement and it looks like it might have been uh, the left side offensive guard for the Miami Dolphins that broke the snap count and that's exactly who it turns out to be. It'll be Bob Kuchenberg who I think just kind of straightened up uh, in the pass blocking posture just before the snap. yard walk off back about to the 43 yard line and it is a third down and 10. Well actually a short 10. Here comes uh, Solomon out wide to the left side of the set. Matt Moore wide to the right side. Sit back the old Bulash and Seifel to split behind the quarterback Strock. Third down and 10. A long count by Strock. Still counting. Still counting. Takeaway. Straight. Block the throw. Fire. Down the middle. In be complete. It was thrown behind. Behind the would-be receiver number 89. Matt Moore the ball may have saved or it may have been poorly thrown. I'm not in a position to say. So Baltimore perhaps uh, taking over a little bit of the momentum of the game in a, in a scoreless game. If you had to give a decision, if this were a fight, Baltimore might be ahead on points, but they're not ahead on points on the scoreboard. There isn't any, and Seiflenak kicks to Stevens down around the 20. Larry Seifel, not only a good distance kicker, but his hang time is remarkable. Stevens is waiting between the Baltimore 15 and 20. No score in the second quarter, 6.21 remaining. Waiting for that snap from center. A long count. Now the snap. Here comes Seifel. Penalty marker drops. Uh, here's the punt coming up toward it is Stevens. Stevens gets it at the 20 and is peeled by the first man downfield, number 44, and that is Barry Hill of the Miami Dolphins, who made the tackle at the Baltimore 21. And I thought I saw a flag go down back upfield, but apparently I did not. I think you did, Chuck. Yes, it was. Offside. They have picked it up already. Miami offside, apparently, and uh, Baltimore might want this one over. And yet, uh, I don't think so. They're going to take it at the 21-yard line. <laughs> what you see is what you got. And that's exactly the way the Colts are playing it right now. There is a break in the action. Let's pause now for this message. Dallas's youthful defense shut down Washington's over-the-hill gang Saturday, and quarterback Roger Staubach survived the shot in the ribs to direct the Cowboys to a 31-10 decision over their most hated rivals and earn a ticket to the NFL playoffs. The Redskin loss removed all hope of Washington continuing in the Super Bowl chase, the first time that has happened since George Allen took over the club in 1971. Sabak, who has a history of bad performances against the rival Redskins, completed only two of ten passes in the opening half. But after suffering a blow that almost put him out of the game late in the first half, came back to direct two long scoring drives in the second half to put the game out of reach. The Cowboy defense, meanwhile, was throttling one Redskin effort after another and finally sent Washington quarterback Billy Kilmer to the bench with an injured right shoulder early in the final period. The Dallas defense, stung for 28 points in the opening half last week against St. Louis, had the final moment of glory, with Charlie Waters intercepting a Randy Johnson pass and dashing 20 yards for a score. This is a scoreless game, 6-14 to go in the second period. Don't forget the locker room report after the game. We'll learn out the outstanding Colts defensively and offensive players of the game, and both Colts received gift certificates from Hamburg. Hamburg, have you got a touch? Vince, uh, double flankers to the left side at the moment. Carr is set out there, and in the slot left is Dowdy. Split backfield, nobody behind the quarterback, Jones. And here's the turn to give to Mitchell. Mitchell comes on a plant straight ahead to about the 24-yard line, where that real good Miami defense led this time by defensive end Bill Stanfield. Stand him up just about at the 25-yard line. A gain of four, second down and six. Remaining better than five minutes, 557 remaining in the first half. The Miami Dolphins nothing, the Baltimore Colts nothing. It's been, uh, you know, kind of a tough football game, and the offensive units have been dominated by the defensive units so far today. High formation by Baltimore. Front man old, deep man light, Al Mitchell. Take away by Jones, give to the second man. Mitchell get hit coming into the hole, and he is able to get forward another yard, maybe to the 26 yard line. Hanging all over him is linebacker uh, Toll, the middle man. 
And Bob Matheson was also in there on the tackle. They spot it just about at the Baltimore 26. Third down and five. Matheson's been tough, hasn't he? Oh, he is. And Toll, uh, there's been some comments in the Baltimore papers about they ran it Toll effectively the last time. He has to read that, and this uh, makes mm -hmm. Steve a little more aggressive today. Well, in the official spot of the football, Vince, he put it right back on the 25, so it's uh, third down and six now. A uh, split backfield, nobody behind the quarterback. We've got Carr wide left down to the right side. Chest of the tight end on the right end of the line. Back to throw goes Jones. Here comes some pressure. He looks, rolls out of it to his right. Jones is running, looking to find a receiver. Fires upfield, and it's caught by Glenn Dowdy on a field back at about the 38-yard line. Dowdy came back on Jared White and beat him to the ball. When your quarterback is in trouble, is in trouble go back home and help him. And that's a, you know, a law of the jungle, and that's exactly what Glenn Dowdy did. Super play. Burt might have taken a chance on beating Toll, who was coming over to meet him at the sideline, but uh, that was a good decision to throw the ball, and Glenn's uh, move coming back to get it made it possible. Good receivers I've seen down through the years, Vince, uh, always do that. When their quarterback gets in trouble, you'll always find him for the most part. Breaking uh, the, uh, the pass route and trying to come back and help him out a little bit. Ready to go. First down at the 38 of the Baltimore Colts. Standard pro set backfield. Here's Jones taking away. And first down, wants to throw. Looks to find a receiver set. Firing deep. Here comes Dowdy on the takeoff. And it's incomplete and out of bounds down around the Miami 20-yard line. Dowdy had his man by a couple of steps. Jones uh, threw the ball the way it should have been thrown. More to the sideline than into the playing area. And it carried out of bounds. I haven't seen Dowdy go deep that much, Chuck. My has been the usual deep man, but Dowdy's a kind of an intermediate depth receiver. That time he was as deep as we've seen him this year. Well, uh, Jarris White got a little bit of help that time from uh, Charlie Babb, and that was about as deep as we have seen Dowdy go this year from uh, the Baltimore 40 to the uh, opposition 40, uh, 20, excuse me. Uh, second down and 10, uh, split backfield, nobody behind Jones, take away, no fake, wants to throw. Jones is back setting. Fires down the middle, it's over the head of the intended receiver, Raymond Chester. Jones just burned the ball, and it failed. and went over the Raymond's head, so we come up to a third down and 10, Baltimore at their own 38. Baltimore showing a lot of respect for Miami's defense up front, which has been tough, been tough running for Lydell this afternoon. Have you had a chance, Vince, to watch on the passing plays the work of George Koontz against that defensive end, Vern Den Herder? Yes, I have. Isn't that nice? Two good pros really doing it. Right. Not specifically, Chuck, but the whole line is all giving Bert a lot of time for yeah. good protection. All ready to go. Third down and 10 at the 38. Split backfield now. This passing down. Let's see what Jones and the Colts will do about it. McCauley is on the backfield. Back to throw Jones. A shallow drop. Look out. Pressure. He ducks him. And Stanfield catches him from behind. And down he goes at about the Baltimore 33. If one doesn't get you, the other will. The first pressure was presented by number 74, Randy Crowder. Jones ducked him and got out of there. And then Stanfield caught him from behind. And Jones is perfectly all right. As he comes to the sideline, Baltimore now is in a punting situation with a third to fourth down at about 15. Punt returner this time is Nat Moore, and he's back at the Miami 20-yard line. Again, the Dolphins put 10 men up front. They have, every time David Lee has punted, they have had a 10-man rush. Waiting for the snap. It's okay. Here comes the rush, and David gets a heck of a good kick away. Deep to Nat Moore, waiting at the top of 23. Along the 25 to the outside, and up the sideline, and out of bounds he goes, and the tackle was made by number 55, Dan Dickel of the Baltimore Colts, somewhere around the 28-yard line. Time out here in Baltimore with a score. The Colts, nothing. The Dolphins, nothing. Sophomore running back Larry Collins scored two touchdowns as Texas A&I University defeated Salem College of West Virginia 37 to nothing in the 20th annual NAIA Championship Bowl. The victory in Gainesville Tech was the 26th consecutive win for the Javelinas and gave them their fifth NAIA crown. Texas A&I finished with an unblemished 12-0 mark while Salem fell to 11-1 on the season. The Javelinas scored three times in the opening half against the usually tough defense of the Tigers. In 11 games, Salem had allowed only a total of 19 points in the first half. Meanwhile, at Sacramento, California, Northern Michigan running back Randy Ari ran 68 yards for a touchdown on the first play from the scrimmage of the second half Saturday, giving the Wildcats a 16-14 victory over Western Kentucky in the NCAA Division II Championship in the Camellia Bowl. 
Ari, who carried 11 for 111 yards, took the handoff from quarterback Steve Mariucci and appeared tackled at the line of scrimmage, but he broke through and ran unhampered into the end zone. Well, Dom Strock jumps into the offensive huddle of the Miami Dolphins who go to work from their own 28-yard line. First down, about 3.20 remaining in the first half, but it's been absolutely built in so far as the scoreboard is concerned. Fully wide to the left side. Standard pro set backfield, Merck Morris and Don Nottingham behind Strock. Waiting for the take. Here's Twilly in motion through the backfield. The turn, the get goes to Nottingham. He comes off the left side and hammers his way up over the 35 to about the 36-yard line where Jim Chayunsky makes the tackle for the Baltimore Colts. For WEMD in Easton, Maryland, and all of our network stations, we'll pause now for station identification. This is the Metromedia Baltimore Colts Football Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Setbacks on the second down and two at the Miami 36. Take away by Strzok. Gives to Nottingham off the right side. He hammers his way up over the 40 to the Miami 45-yard line. Just power running. Straight veers right and left by Nottingham. That's picked up a first down for the Dolphins at their own 46. Eight yards and two on the first down and ten on that one. And the Miami offensive line blowing the Colts out at this stage. Absolutely right. Matt Moore wide to the right side. To the left side is... Uh, Howard Cooley, first down at the Miami 46. Strzok looking over the Colts defensive unit. The uh, rookie quarterback yanks it away. A shallow drop wants to throw. Fires quickly. He's got Matt Moore open at the Baltimore 40. To the Baltimore 35. Down to the 30-yard line. Still on his feet and down he goes. At about the 30-yard line. The tackle made by Jackie Wallace. Matt Moore on a very quick in pattern. Made a good catch and an equally fine run. Miami first down at the Baltimore 30. There's the two-minute warning with a score. The Colts nothing and Miami nothing. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Julian Corner of Lake Worth, Florida shot a 200 par 70 Saturday to take a one-shot lead over Judy Rankin and Jane Blaylock in a wind-blown first round of the 36-hole Colgate Triple Crown of Golf in Palm Springs, California. Mrs. Connor had three birdies and a single bogey for her total of that 70 over a 6,511-yard Mission Hills Country Club course, the site of the Dinah Shore Winner's Circle LPGA event held annually in April. Sandra Palmer, who captured this year's Dinah Shore Classic, and Joanna Warsham had 72s, while Pat Bradley, winner of the Colgate Far East event at Melbourne, Australia last weekend, was tied at 76 with Carol Mann and Joyce Kazmierski. Japan's Cheiko Higuchi was dead last in the field of nine ladies. She had a 77. The Phoenix Roadrunners of the National Hockey League announced uh, Saturday they have traded back winger Peter McAmey to the San Diego Mariners for forward Dave Walter in a straight player transaction. With uh, two minutes remaining, we're past by far the deepest Miami penetration of the day. First down, Baltimore 30 yard line. And uh, here come the Dolphins, and that cold defense is really hard pressed now to get the job done. Morris. Nottingham setbacks behind Strzok, waiting for the Miami quarterback to take away. Fake hands off to Morris, swinging around his own right hand, makes the cut and gets hit by Tom McLeod, and down he goes at about the 33-yard line. McLeod, the cold linebacker, did a very good job penetrating, and then, as he always does, a one-on-one -on -one tackle for a loss of three. He might be the best on the club at that stage, got one-on-one -on -one tackling. The Miami club threatening, as you said, the deepest they've been. Baltimore doesn't have the benefit of its crowd to help him in the open end. It's much more penetrating the noise when you get in the closed end. Again, Morris and Nottingham uh, in a split backfield. Nobody directly behind the quarterback. Second and 13 at the Baltimore 33 right now. Waiting for Strzok's takeaway. He yanks without a bound. An inside handoff to Nottingham. Cuts the middle and fell down coming across the 30 and managed to pull his way to about the 28-yard line. Stan White held him there. Nottingham seemed to trip and pitch forward. And is spotted. The ball is spotted just about at the 29. Jim Chayunsky made the tackle. Miami take third and nine. Timeout. Check the first they've taken with 108 to go. Shock, I wouldn't imagine, is quite as proficient at using the clock as Greasy, who's one of the best in that business. Well, one of the things that we asked ourselves before today's ball game was whether or not the ball or cold defensive front four that leads the National Football League in sacks with 55 would be able to make their presence felt against this rookie quarterback, Don Strzok. 
Well, the answer is a very definite no. They have not yet been able to penetrate the offensive unit of the Miami Dolphins. The offensive line has more than contained the rush of the Baltimore Colts front four. They have right, Chuck. Mostly he's been throwing short. The one time he threw long, it was picked off by Lloyd Mumford. So uh, we did get some pressure that time, but they haven't been close to a sack in uh, the six or seven times that he has uh, thrown, thrown the ball. Seven, seven attempts and three completions and no sacks. When play is resumed, uh, we've got a third down and about nine. The ball resting well. They put the ball down at the 28-yard line, so it's third down and eight. And the ball at the Baltimore Colts 28-yard line. And uh, we've got Ray Oldham on field. Middle linebacker Chayunski is off. Five defensive backs are on field. They come out into a passing formation, a double wing. The only man behind the quarterback, Bulash, waiting for Stock's takeaway from Miami. He's got rolls back, wants to throw, flag drops down the play, rolling to the right, Strzok looking now, firing into the end zone, Matt Moore is there, and it is an incomplete pass, he is out of the end zone, they rule he is out of the end zone, but he caught the ball, and a penalty flag has also been dropped, and we'll see what this is all about. Check, that was a rather superb catch uh, by Moore, unfortunately out, I thought he had gotten his hands down, but Miami was illegally in motion of the snap, so uh, he can't feel too bad about that. And he's practiced the dragging of the feet as Mr. Moore, and he made an excellent grab. But he was the, the official right down there on the end line, yeah. just, you know, right on top of the play, perfectly positioned, said, uh-uh, no catch, you're out. And the Colts declined the uh, penalty, and it brings up fourth down, and eight from the 28, and uh, let's see who's on field for it. It'll Darrow, Yarrow, Yepremian, Darrow is on to try it. It'll be kicked from the 35, which means it's a 45-yard effort, and he is excellent, just excellent from these distances. Waiting for the snap, stifle the holder, pop, kick in the air, on the way, and let's see whether it's good or not. No, it looks like he missed it. It came out wide to the left. The throw from the 45-yard field goal effort by Yepremian is wide to the left side of the upright. And uh, these two good football teams, Vince, just keep hammering away without a score with only 55 seconds left in the half. Each has missed the opportunity to field goal. This is more difficult than certainly Linhart was. Baltimore gets the ball at the 28-yard line. Uh, John Crittenden told me before the game, Chuck, that Darrow psyched himself up. He doesn't like dirt fields off yeah. which to kick. But I'll tell you the truth, the field out there doesn't have much grass on it, so he didn't stub his foot going through it. He just missed it wide to the left. Well, he's, uh, you know, he's been very, very good, but a 45-yard effort is, you know, kind of difficult. First down, Baltimore at the uh, 28-yard line of the Baltimore Colts. Back to throw goes Burt Jones and first down, plenty of time. Going for broke. Here comes uh, Glenn Dowdy. Incomplete at the Miami 20. Oh, what a bomb from uh, Burt Jones to the intended receiver, Glenn Dowdy, and believe me, it was overthrown. So I had to throw it 70 yards because it was somewhat diagonally from the middle of the field to the sideline, and it was overthrown, 70 yards. So Glenn just couldn't get there. Roger Carr was streaking down the other side, Chuck, and he wasn't just running out there to keep somebody occupied. He might have been a receiver. As the CBers would say, he was... Dowdy. The other side goes Roger Carr. Swift backfield, second down, 10 at the 28. Jones again wants to put it in the air. A straight drop, set, pressure. And down he goes at the 15-yard line. And breaking through uh, was Bob Matheson, the linebacker, and he pulled Jones off his feet at the Colts. 15-yard line. And let's see where the official's going to spot the ball. They say the 16-yard line. The Colts offensively, Vince, have rushed for 71 yards and passed for 82, a total of 153 yards. The Dolphins in the first half, 36 yards passing, 68 yards rushing, a total of 104. And with 43 seconds of the clock ticking out and third down and very, very long, I wouldn't be surprised if they just sit on it here. Well, of course, Miami can take a timeout and force them to punt. Right. They don't make it on this down. Third down, about 22 at the Baltimore 16. Uh, Dowdy to the right side of the set, car to the left side of the set, waiting for Jones to take away from quarterback Mendenhall. He's got it, a straight drop, wants to throw. Set, rolls to his right, fires, penalty marker. As a McCauley catches the screen at the 20, down to the 25, and then he is pulled off the speed at the 27, and a penalty flag has been dropped back downfield at the 10-yard line. Ernie Roan makes the stopping tackle. And we got the preliminary sign, but I missed it. I think, uh, I don't know whether it was holding or what it was. I just missed the sign. I know it could happen here. Now, 
Now he has 13 seconds to go. Miami takes the penalty. Baltimore will, will get the down over, so I guess they could run out the clock. However, with another timeout left, Miami could stop the clock, force a punt, and we could see a fair catch up here around midfield, and you Birmingham try one of those free kick field goals. So it's... it's but I think that's all academic because I don't think the penalty was against the Colts. Yes, it was. It was holding in Miami. And they, they declined they it. it. Right. It's uh, now a fourth down for the Baltimore Colts and the ball resting at the Colts uh, 27. It's about fourth down 11 at the Baltimore 27. David Lee is on the front, and this will be a 10-man rush again from Miami. Nat Moore is waiting at the Miami 25-yard line, waiting for the snap from center from Forest Blue. Still waiting, still waiting. There's the snap. Perfect. Here comes the kick. They've got two men in, and they block it. They block it, and it's going to be caught and batted upfield by one of the Baltimore Colts. They roll it and let it roll and let it roll to the Miami 46, and then they down it. Now they're calling the penalty flag. flag is dropped. I'll tell you, Chuck, they're going to get a field goal shot, I believe, with three seconds. It has to be a penalty against the Colts. Stan White batted the ball as it was. Uh, the kick was partially blocked, and they, but it, it continued upfield past the scrimmage line. Illegally batting the football, and, uh, you know, White tried to make it look as though he fumbled the ball, and his play acting was not, but Vern Denherter blocked the punt for the Miami Dolphins. And the penalty flags are dropped along the 32. With three seconds left, Miami is definitely going to get. Now, let's see. Will they take, take it as it is? No, they can't. We'll wait and see where they spot that football. It's right now resting along the 32-yard line. The Premian is on field. Shula is hollering from the sideline. Three seconds on the stadium clock. Now, if they get a penalty from the spot of the violation, I haven't seen this one, not this year. They uh, could move the ball closer to the goal line with three seconds. It's, you know, it's plenty of time to kick, but the Premian is now going off the field. Now, let's see what the official marks this procedure against Baltimore decline. The Dolphins take the football and it will be at the 32-yard line of the Baltimore Colts. And Yepremian's coming back in. And we'll have the field goal effort from Garrow Yepremian. And it will be somewhere in the vicinity of 48 yards. It'll be spotted along about the 37-38 yard line. He's one for one between 40 and 50. He is six for six between 30 and 40 and five for five between 20 and 30. In fact, they're going to march off some more yardage, so yeah, it's not going to be this long. See? Well, I this thought they declined 15 the... yards. This is really going to hurt. Now he's right in the middle of the goal post, and he'll have about a 20, 35 yards. Oh, well, I thought they declined it. Now... If they declined it, that means that we punt it again. If they decline the penalty, Baltimore, if they accept the penalty, Baltimore will kick again. If they decline the penalty, I think if they decline the penalty, the Colts will have to kick it again. Okay, we don't have a kicker in there. The legal procedure against the Colts of batting the ball, that's what Pat Haggerty is indicating up this way. He's a referee. Miami has the Premian in, and uh, they're going to try a field goal from the 25-yard line. Well, now, here is that the Colts are penalized, and apparently it's a loss of... I'm a little bit confused about this. The, thing was, the call was made after the kick. In other words... Well, here's a 25, 35-yard yeah. goal effort by your Premian. Spot, kick, in the air, on the way, and it is no it. good. So maybe he can't kick off dirt. He didn't that time. Please believe it. <laughs> Vince, did you get an interpretation of that penalty? Yes, it was batting the ball, which is illegal. In other words, the block, the, the, the uh, illegal procedure was for batting the ball. And therefore, they had no choice but to accept right, the penalty. Right, they couldn't right. decline it. Right. That's the end of the first half with uh, the score. The Baltimore Colts nothing, the Miami Dolphins nothing. We'll have more in one minute. in professional football today. We have seen here in Baltimore and the Dolphins and the Colts in a scoreless first half. The only uh, really scoring opportunities either club had were field goal efforts. And uh, two of the three field goals that have been missed in this first half were certainly very makeable, particularly when you uh, think of a fellow like Garrow Yepremian, who has made some you know, astonishing kicks in his career with the Miami Dolphins. He has missed two, one from 25, one from 45. And the Colts, Tony Linhart, have missed one from 30. And Baltimore with Linhart will kick it off. Down on the goal line, Matt Moore. 
and also Hubert Ginn waiting for uh, Linhart to reach that football. He's up on the ball, hits it, and he's hit it good. Deep toward the Miami goal line, waiting for it to snap more up to the 10, down the 15 to the 20. Great wedge, 25, outside 30, up to the 32, and out of bounds he goes. Spun out there by the Baltimore Colts, Dave Pair. And for WCBM in Baltimore and WAMD in Aberdeen, Maryland, we'll pause now for station identification. This is the Metro Media Baltimore Colts Football Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Dolphin ball, first down, and the ball resting at the Miami 32-yard line. Brock is again quarterbacking the turn. The give goes to Morris into the middle. He knifes his way straight ahead up over the 35 to about the 37-yard line and up. Just good sheer straight ahead power from the Miami Dolphins before John Dutton is able to uh, pull him down somewhere around the 37. Mercury Morris, one of the more celebrated outside runners in the National Football League, doing a good bit of running right down the middle here against the Baltimore Colts. The second down and five. The Dolphins have done this with alarming regularity today. Had a first and ten run it and come up second and five as they are right now. Nottingham and Morris set back behind the quarterback, Don Strzok, in motion Twilly. The give goes to Nottingham. Coming outside, shakes off one tackle and gets backed up at about the 40-yard line, maybe the 41-yard line. Bruce Laird, among other guys, like Stan White in there on the hit. Also Nelson Muncy over there. They spotted just over the 40-yard line. Third down and a very short two for Miami at that spot. Twilly out, and the tight end comes in to replace him, the blocker. As Chuck said, they've tried to make five or better on first, and they've done it a lot. They really yeah. some pressure off Strzok, forcing him not to throw very much. Nottingham and Morris shoulder to holder, and a, a shoulder and a standard throw set. Matt Moore shifts over to a wing on the right side of this Miami set, third and two with the Miami 40 to Nottingham straight ahead. He's got the first down, battling his way forward to the Miami 44-yard line. Nottingham feels through a pretty good hole and is pulled down by John Dutton at the Miami 44, where it's first down. I think Strzok's thrown on first, Chuck. Comes up in the middle of the field. He did on first, I think, when we had the interception. When Ronnie had penetrated to the 35. But since then, they've run the ball inside the tackles, mostly, on first down. Curley has set out wide to the left side of the Miami set. More the other way, waiting for Don Strzok to get that snap from Langer. Yanks it away. A shallow drop. Wants to throw. Fires outside. It is caught by Matt Moore. And down he goes with Mumford uh, making the tackle at the Miami 48-yard line. And I'll tell you, there was a little feeling in there with Mumford and Moore. In front of the Miami bench, where he used to where he used to sit. Frank, he's happy to be here. <laughs> Speaking of Matt Moore, let's take a look at the uh, pass receiving. He caught three for 36 in the first half. The only Dolphin to catch any passes in the first half. Chester, Mitchell, Carr, Dowdy, and McCauley all caught him for the Colts. No score in the third quarter. Early moment Strzok gives to Morris a left-hand sweep. He turns the corner and is hit at about the 50, falling forward to the Baltimore 49-yard line. It looks like Stan White, among others, along with Bruce Laird and the big guy John Dutton. And Morris has now uh, come up to about the Baltimore 49-yard line, a gain of three, third and three. Twilly is now going to the sideline. Probably offer that double tight end offense. Big down. Third down, about three. Nottingham and Morris, the setback behind uh, quarterback Don Strzok, waiting for the takeaway. He fakes, hands off, wants to throw a deep drop, set, firing deep, all alone, and he can't get it. His Mumford broken up. That boy was all alone, and Mumford came up and made a very good defensive play to stop the Dolphins on third and three. Super play, Chuck. Hit him at just the right time. It was the same kind of play that Miami's uh, number 41, uh, the other White. end of the Jarris White, had made against uh, uh, Carr at the other end of the field. Perfect timing. Forcing a punt. And Seifel is on the punt, waiting at the 10-yard line. Howard Stevens, shallow safeties along the 25. Ray Oldham and Marshall Johnson waiting for the snap for the Miami Dolphins. Ready to go. There's the snap. It's okay. Here comes the punt. Seifel hits it. Not as good. He almost missed this one. 
It's going to hit on the Baltimore 20, bouncing around. It's down by the Miami Dolphins at about the 16, 15-yard line by Barry Hill. They walk it back out to near the 18. Uh, when they put the ball down, we'll let you know where it is. It's uh, right in the middle of a couple of miles. That's where it always turns up. Exactly. First down at the Baltimore 18. No score in Baltimore, the Dolphins and the Colts. The Dolphins, the established championship caliber football team, playing against almost superhuman odds this year with one injury after another, are right where they have been year after year. The Colts are trying to get there for the first time, and they have not been able to move it too well against Baltimore, against Miami so far. The gift to Mitchell, right side, no hold. It doesn't open. He has hit at the line of scrimmage and stopped cold. Bob Matheson, the linebacker, knifing in. Ben Herder is underneath the pile. Let's see who the last man up. It's going to be that number 56, Steve Toll. They mark it at the 19. Uh, second down, 9. Baltimore at the 19. Look at these Cleveland Browns rolling up over. You talk about a club that's had injury problems. Kansas City on the short end of a 33 to nothing score in the fourth quarter with Cleveland leading. Second and 9. Double flank, wide right side. Dowdy and Carr take away. Jones takes, rolls back to throw, looks to find a receiver. Now drops it off to Bill Olds at the 20 to the 25. Outside, on his feet at the 30, and up he goes to about the 33-yard line. A fine catch by Bill Olds on a better run. First down, Baltimore at their own 33 or 4. Jarrett White knocked him out. And when Lydell isn't running the ball or catching it, he's blocking as he did on that play to help Bill Olds gain the extra yardage for the first down. Spotted the ball at the cold 33 yard line. 14 yards. Dowdy wheels out of the huddle, coming off to the uh, right side. Now there's some confusion. Now here goes Carr out to the left side of the set. Dowdy to the right side. And we've got Bill Olds and Light Elmer to shoulder to shoulder in a standard throw set. First down at the 33. Takeaway by Jones. No fake. Lost to throw a shallow drop. Quick pass. Caught. Dowdy dropped it after he caught the ball. They're fighting for possession, and it's going to be uh, ruled dead. It is not going to be a caught pass, a completed pass. It will be an incompleted pass. Dowdy had it just for a split second, and the hit knocked him free of the football. Oh, made a hit. Oh, was it a hit? Oh, my. Cole hit him, and Cole uh, hurts more than Dowdy. If uh, a fellow's gait will tell you anything. Well, as Dowdy is the first guy to tell you, Vince, nobody ever told you it was going to be easy. <laughs> Second down and 10 at the 33. Baltimore, nothing. Miami, nothing. We're in the third quarter. 10.52 remaining. A great day for a football game on the biggest crowd ever in Memorial Stadium history to see a football game. 60,548. They oversold by 310. Formation on second down in motion. Dowdy toward the backfield. Pitch out to Mitchell. Sweeping the left side. Makes a cut and Mitchell is hit. It hit good by Powell, the middle linebacker at about the 34-yard line of the Baltimore Colts. And there's a Colt very slow to get up again. And we are taking a look to figure out who it is. It's Bill Lightel. Uh, no, it's Glenn Dowdy. Excuse me. Glenn Dowdy slowly getting up. The gain is to the 34-yard line where it is third down and nine. The Colt defense or offensive unit just not able to handle the defensive unit of the Miami Dolphins. And the same thing is true of Miami. They have not yet been able to handle the Colt defensive unit. So defense has been the name of the game. It comes as no surprise in a scoreless ball game. Third and nine from the 34. Car left, Dowdy right. Take away by Jones, straight drop, looking, looking, now sets, now rolls out of it, looking again, he ducks back in the pocket, bounces to his right, it's being chased, and Jones fires desperately upfield, it's going to be incomplete. Jones is having a lot of trouble picking up his receivers, and the reason he is is the very fine defensive play of the deep four of the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, he's getting good pressure, but the fellas in the, in the deep people defending, playing excellent football. We have to kick it, and they have they blocked it the last time we've well, it. We're close a few other times. And for the first time today, Vince, yeah. they do not mount a 10-man rush. They have a return on to the Dolphins. Nat Moore in the middle of the uh, triumphant of uh, safety men. Jake Scott on the near sideline. Charlie Babb on the far sideline waiting for the snap to David Lee. Perfect. Now the puck. He takes the time, hits it end over end. Here comes uh, Nat Moore up to the Dolphin. 28. Fumbled it. Fighting for possession. He's got it. Bounces clear. Forward to the 30. To the 35 and out of bounds goes Nat Moore. And helping him up is Stan White, who was over there along with Nat to help knock him out of bounds. Moore a little slow getting up. He's all right. Stan said everything's okay, kid. And there's a Baltimore Colt down on the field. Ready, and Scott. there is a break in the action. And we'll pause now for this message. 
A record four players were chosen from the Oklahoma Sooners for the All-America team named by the Walter Camp Foundation. That's the football foundation. Sooners placed three defensive stalwarts on the 24-man squad. They are and Jimbo Elrod, plus Leroy and Dewey Selman. Offensive guard Terry Webb also was selected to the team. Of the 17 universities represented, only four other schools, Ohio State, Penn State, California, and Texas A&M had more than one player chosen. The top-ranked Buckeyes placed two-time Heisman Trophy winner Archie Griffin and defensive back Tim Fox on the squad. Linebacker Greg Buttle and kicker Chris Barr were chosen from the eighth-ranked Nittany Lions. Meanwhile, running back Chuck Muncy and wide, rece uh, wide receiver Steve Rivera were selected from 16th-ranked California, and the sixth-ranked Aggies were represented by linebacker Ed Samanini and defensive back Pat Thomas. The, the injured Baltimore Colt being held to the sideline is Freddie Scott. It appears to be a leg hurt. Statistically, here's some uh, information prepared by Tommy Davis about the Baltimore Colts defensive unit. They have shut out the opposition over six straight quarters, including the first half of today's game. Also have shut out their opponents in 10 of the last 12 quarters the Colts have played. They have shut out their opponents going all the way back to the second half of the Miami Dolphin game in Miami. First down, Miami at the uh, Miami 37-yard uh, line. Take away by Strock and first down. Wants to throw pressure coming. Throws to the screen man. Don Nottingham up to the 40, to the 45. Open at the 50 into Baltimore territory. Down by Jackie Wallace at the Baltimore 44-yard line. First down from the Miami 35. A screen to Nottingham and the Miami Dolphins blew the Colts right off the field for a first down at the Baltimore 45. 20 yards on the play. And since we said Strock hadn't been throwing on first, he's done it on the next two series, including that screen to Nottingham. He may be a rookie, untested quarterback, but in a pressure-laden ball game, he looks like he's been doing it every week for quite a few years. First down, Baltimore 45 in motion 20 through the Dolphin backfield to the far sideline. Take away by Strzok. He hands it off to Mercury Mars, trying to swing the left end. They plug it up. He tries to reverse the field and can't get anywhere as the Colts, Bruce Laird, and John Dutton are all over him uh, right along the Baltimore 47 or 8-yard line. What a play Dutton made. Backing up the opposition stutter step from Mercury and John Dutton. Dutton, who's a lot taller, and stayed right with him with the steps and made the defensive play possible. Well, he read it very well, and Dutton had a heck of a jump and reacted beautifully, and now, instead of Merck Morris in that backfield, number 32, Benny Malone has come on for the Miami Dolphins. Some of it runs as though he doesn't know which way his legs are going, and is he an effective runner? They also have Bulash in there as a setback alongside of the Benny Malone. Second and 14 at the Baltimore 49. Waiting for the snap. And whoop, Stock broke the snap count. The ball didn't come. Stock moved. And the flags are dropped all over the place. It's illegal procedure for a back in, in motion penalty against Miami. Must be kind of embarrassing, huh? Uh, to be in on the center. Give him the snap count. Move away. And the ball's not there. Okay, well, 10 other guys were wrong, you have to think. <laughs> I guess so. Well, I guess that's the sort of thing that you, you get with timing. He hasn't sure. been snapped the ball very long from Langer. He has played very well, though. Strock, the youngster from Virginia Polytechnic Institute. He really has. He's uh, been uh, just an outstanding quarterback in uh, some very tough football games last week against Buffalo, this week against Baltimore. Second down and 19 at the, at the Miami, 46. Strock yanks it away. Wants it. On the reverse, he gets it to Malone. Malone around the right end. Good blocking. And is hit by the Malone, uh, by uh, number 52, McLeod, and taken down right about at the Baltimore 48-yard line. Boy, that fellow's a good, slashing type of a runner is Benny Malone. He sure is, and those crazy legs of his. They spotted at the Baltimore Colt 48-yard line, and it is now third down and 13 for Miami, and in the early going of the second half, one of the more important plays facing the Baltimore defense, Mike Barnes drops out, and you add Ray Oldham. Sometimes the Colts drop a linebacker in the third and passing situation. Sometimes they drop a tackle. Now they've dropped a linebacker. The Colts seem a little bit confused defensively momentarily. Now they're set. Third and 13 from the Baltimore 48. 
takeaway by Strzok. A shallow drop. Quarterback draw. He runs it out of there. He's down to the 40. On his feet into the 30-yard line. And pulled out inside the Baltimore 30-yard line goes quarterback Don Strzok. And what a heck of a call. A quarterback draw. And Strzok runs for a first down inside the Baltimore 30. Fantastic call. Exactly. He called it. I mean, this wasn't a broken play. He ran a quarterback draw. Drop back. Pressure was coming. Got between the uh, initial people who were pressuring him and made a first down at the 29. And now back in that uh, backfield again, Nottingham and Merck Morris wide to the left side, fully to the right side, Matt Moore. Strzok fumbled the football, picked it up and starts running with it and Freddie Cook eats him up, grabs the football, but it has been whistled dead or has it? No, Miami still has the football. Freddie Cook searched the quarterback Strzok, took the ball away from him and the ball has been whistled dead prior to that event. Nobody can question that because only the guys in the field heard that whistle. But who can say yeah. what it was called there? They gained a yard to boot. The Colts aren't complaining too much. Initial reaction was a little violent. But that's the second time in the last series of plays uh, that the Dolphins have had jumped a little mix-up in their snap on the ball handling from their center and their quarterback slot. Now they chase number 86, Freddie Solomon, wide to the right side of the set. We have, again, uh, Nottingham and Morris. Here comes Solomon in motion through the Dolphin backfield of the near sideline. Strzok takes it away without a fake. Rolls back, wants to throw, has time. Now rolls out, gets away from one man, gets away from a second, throws, and it's incomplete, intending for Solomon at about the 15-yard line of the Colts. Finally, got a little pressure on quarterback Strzok. Joe Airman and John Dutton were there, but they couldn't wrap him up. The Dolphins third down and nine of the Colts, 28. for the Dolphins. Ray Oldham now replaces, uh, last time on a passing situation, he replaced middle linebacker Chayunsky. Or uh, rather, he replaced uh, Barnes, the defensive tackle. Now he replaces middle linebacker Chayunsky. Third down nine at about the 28. Stifle is set out wide to this uh, near sideline. Solomon the other way. The only man behind the quarterback is Gulak. Strzok misses the snap count again, and the penalty flags are blocked dropped all over the place, and again, the Miami quarterback has had, this is the third time Vince, he's had problems with a snap down, and the snap from center to quarterback. Lang is just holding the ball, the center, Strzok is backing away, and as soon as he moves, the coach will blast in on him, and Langer has the ball, which means that Strzok is not, uh, doesn't know that he owns the count that he has called. These are the kind of mistakes that, you know, can be very, very, you know, very costly. I don't know whether crowd noise has any bearing on it. It could be. It, uh, it's just the kind of a thing that uh, is upsetting, and I'm sure the more often it happens to Strzok, the more he thinks about it, the more difficult the situation becomes. Third and 14 at the Baltimore 33. Waiting for the snap from center to Don Strzok again. He's got it this time. Back to throw. Pressure coming. Rolls to his left. Out of the clear. Sets up. And fires upfield. It's going to be incomplete. Larry Seifel drops it at the Baltimore 18. So they'll try another field goal. I, or will they? This is too far, maybe. I don't see that yeah. fellow with the next guy. <laughs> see a 50-yarder. And the fellow with the next guy, Gary Yepremian, is staying on the side. Fourth down, I guess Stiple will try to put it in the corner. Well, let's see whether Mr. Stiple does what he did a couple of times in pressure football games in the past. Runs that football. Does he run that ball? You better believe he can run that football. Well, the wide people for us aren't aware of it. They're not looking at him anyway. Already, we're waiting for this uh, punt if it develops, and it probably will. Stevens is very shallow. They figure that maybe he might want to run it. He waits for pressure. Now, here comes his kick angle to the near sideline. The Colts are going to let it hit. It hits and goes into the end zone. Colts will have a cutback and first down at their own 20-yard line. Hey, there's a timeout here in Baltimore. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Checking the scoreboard again, we have some more scores. Uh, Buffalo pouring it on uh, New England now. Braxton going one yard for a touchdown. The extra point was good, 20-7. to seven. Then O.J. O.J. Simpson ran, ran 63 yards. This is still in the third quarter. Extra point again was good. That made the score 27-7, to seven, Buffalo. And still yet, in the fourth quarter, uh, Marangi 
throws a touchdown pass to Hill of covering 41 yards. Again, the conversion was good. And in the fourth period, it's 34-7 Buffalo over New England. Now, at Atlanta, the Falcons uh, have scored again. France's 31-yard pass from Standback, extra point by Micklemeyer, good. 31-9, Atlanta over the 49ers. This is in the fourth period. Halftime, St. Louis Cardinals 17, and the Chicago Bears nothing. Well, the uh, punt from Larry Seifel, intended for a coffin corner, rolled in the end zone. Baltimore goes to work, first down at their 20-yard line. We have 6.39 remaining in the third quarter. No score. Mitchell and Old setbacks behind Jones. Double flank wide left. The give to Mitchell. Sweep on the right side. Fakes in, cuts out, and is caught and pulled down by the linebacker on that side, Doug Swift. And he may have lost a yard or two as Mitchell has not been able to get outside. You know, Chuck, the first time really he's tried to get outside, and they have had no success running straight at him where they had the success the earlier game in Miami. And I figure on first down that time they'd fake it inside or give him feeling that they were going inside, try to get him outside, and it was worse. Four people tackling. I'll tell you, that's a very well-schooled, experienced, solid defensive unit that the Miami Dolphins can show you. Now here's Dowdy in motion coming through the cold backfield from the left side to the right side. Split back, nobody behind Jones. Back to throw goes the Baltimore quarterback. Pressure coming, but he fires the screen to Bill Olds, and it's incomplete. They had a blitz on. Firing in was linebacker Doug Swift on... Uh, quarterback Burt Jones and he hurried the screen pass it goes incomplete bringing up third down and 12 and do they screen their defenses and do they screen that blitz oh yeah they, they talk about well schooled and Mathis and then he's playing with some young people too Toll and Crowder they're young football players Jarris White now this is just one of the more successful football teams of recent years these Miami Dolphins they are battling the Colts to a scoreless deadlock as we come up third down and 12. The Baltimore Colts with their own 18. Jones yanks it away, rolls to his left, wants to throw, fires down the middle. It is incomplete, intending for Raymond Chester at about the 31-yard line, covering with Charlie Babb, and the Colts will kick it away, and Jones is not having a good day. In the first half, Jones uh, did not have the kind of a, an afternoon he wanted to have. He was... In passing, Jones uh, threw the ball 15 times, completed 9 for 93 yards. And now he has thrown the ball 20 times, completing 10. And the reason he is not having the kind of a day that Burt would like to have is two, twofold. One, uh, the injury, I think, does restrict him somewhat. And secondly, it's been a heck of a good defensive effort from the Miami Dolphins. Waiting at the 35, Matt Moore. Here comes the kick from David Lee, end over end. He didn't get it the way he wanted it. Moore's got it to the Miami 45. Laterally along the 45. Makes a cut up to the Baltimore 40. Down to the Baltimore 30. Moore is taken off his feet there. And he is down at about the 27-yard line. And the guy who did it was Dan White. Had to do it. There was only one man left. Time there is a timeout here in Baltimore with a score. The Dolphins nothing and Baltimore nothing. Other happenings in uh, sports today. Marquette coach Al McGuire has insisted from the beginning of the college basketball season that Paul may be a sleeper in the Midwest this season. As it turned out, McGuire proved to be a good prophet. DePaul shocked seventh-ranked Louisville last night, breaking the Cardinals' 24-game home court winning streak with a 78-76 triumph. McGuire will get a chance to see DePaul close up early next year. The second-ranked Marquette Warriors visit DePaul next month, and the Chicago school travels to Milwaukee in February. In between, DePaul will test its giant killer ability against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Here's how some of the top teams fared in basketball over the weekend. Number one, Indiana beat Florida State 83-59, then one over Notre Dame 63-60. Marquette, number two, as we said, beat Drake 80-58. Number three, Maryland beat Boston University and also Georgia Tech. Well, the Miami Dolphins who have been in the Colts' backyard entirely of the second half, 534 remaining in the third. First down of the Colts, 30 in motion, 20 toward his own backfield. Strock gives to Nottingham, burst off the left side on his hip crossing the 25 and pull down and held by Stan White. The attendance this afternoon is 60,548 uh, sold. Those were tickets sold and distributed. In the ballpark, 59,398. That 
means we have our 1150 no show. To the 24 yard line, second down and six, Miami at that spot at the Baltimore Colt 24 yard line. The takeaway, the gift to Nottingham, swings to his left, gets the block, and Stan White stacks him up, and down he goes at about the 24 yard line. White just would not be taken out of the play and uh, got the bowling ball and just uh, stood him up. And he's a tough guy to take on one and one. Met him chest to chest on that one, Chuck. Good center of gravity. Stan White's not a stocky individual himself. Good play. It's a big play here. Every play's a big play. Scoreless game, 447 left third period. You just can't count on your premium to continually miss field goals. Uh -huh. That's all there is to it. Down and six at the 24-yard line. Strzok uh, now comes around in a passing uh, formation, a double wing. The only man behind the quarterback is Blue Lodge. Strzok takes it away, rolls back the throw, has plenty of time, fires his pass, and is caught between two cold defenders, and the flag goes down. The, the man who caught it was Larry Seiple, and a penalty flag has been dropped to the 15-yard line. And we'll see what this is all about. The flag has been dropped. Nice between two Baltimore Colt defenders and made the catch. And the referee says interference Baltimore. First down. The catch was made anyway, and there's no further damage, but the ball now to 17. They didn't prevent the catch for the interference. Deepest they've been. You know, it seems like it's only a matter of time. They've had it down on this end of the field throughout this third quarter, have the Dolphins, and have still not been able to score. To Bulash, down through the right side, all the way to the Baltimore 10-yard line goes. And Blue and Bruce Laird is able to ride him down with Lloyd Mumford's help. That's about the Baltimore 10-yard line. And the defensive unit of the Baltimore Colts has been on the field for quite a little while here in this third quarter, and Miami is just bringing it to them. Second down and three now at the Baltimore 10-yard line. They come out with Blue Lodge and Merck Morris, the setbacks behind the quarterback, Don Strzok. Waiting for that takeaway. Strzok's got it. Gives to Morris down the middle into the Baltimore five, and he has held up the five-yard line. But a first down and goal to go for the Dolphins at the Baltimore five. Buffalo is leading New England 34-14 uh, in the fourth quarter. Cleveland Browns having a great day. They lead Kansas City 40-7 in the fourth quarter. Right now, Miami has just climbed right up on that touchdown platform. They are five yards away with Bulash and Merck Morris as a setback behind the quarterback, Don Strzok. Takeaway by Strzok to Bulash straight ahead, and he is held at about the three-yard line. Nothing yep. fancy, just a straight dive play from Bulaz. Three more pops, though. First down gains a couple. They put it on the three, and I'll have goal to go on second. And here comes Nottingham in, and Bulaz goes to the sideline. The ball spotted at about the Baltimore four. Great punt returns by Nat Moore. Kept this Miami Dolphin club in the cold end of the field all through this third quarter. Morris and uh, Nottingham behind quarterback Strzok. Second and goal to the Baltimore four. Waiting for the takeaway. It goes to Morris, swinging to his right, makes his cut, hit at about the two, and down he goes. Morris did not get in on an attempted sweep of the right side. It looked like Jackie Wallace was there to make the tackle. It'll be third down, goal to go, and the ball is being spotted around the Baltimore Colt two. Nottingham to the sideline, Bulash into the huddle for the Miami Dolphins. No score. Time remaining, 2:23 in the third quarter in Baltimore. A scoreless ball game. Again, Bulash, Merck Morris, shoulder to shoulder in the standard pro set backfield. Third and goal at the Baltimore two. The turn, the gift to Morris to the left side. Outside he goes. Mercury is in for the score. Morris has swept the left end and has gone in for the score. Two yards away from the goal line, he put the ball over his head as if as much to say, I see it coming, I see the line, nobody can get me. And they didn't, as Nelson Muncy made a, a late bid to bring him down. Well, it was just kind of just a matter of time as the Dolphins handled the ball in cold territory. Two of the 
three times they've had it in the third quarter. They were in the Baltimore cold end of the field. A bad snap. The kick is in the air, but the kick is good. And the Dolphins go out in front of the Baltimore Colts by a score of 7 to nothing. We hope that our troops around the world are enjoying today's game and now being broadcast on 300 stations of the American Forces Radio Network. For those stations and our flagship station, WCBM in Baltimore, we pause now 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Metro Media Baltimore Colts Football Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. At 790 and 1420... This is American Forces Radio. Well, we've got uh, we've got the punt returning of of uh, Matt Moore. I think uh, is very very important to this ball game so far. On the punt, when Baltimore came up fourth and twelve with their own eighteen, David Lee punted and Moore brought it all the way back to the Baltimore twenty-eight. And from there, it was the uh, not easy, but it was a lot more uh, less difficult for Miami to work it in. And uh, Matt has returned a couple of punts exceptionally well for the ball to, for the Miami Dolphins today, who now lead Baltimore seven to nothing with 2:07 remaining on the third quarter. And Yepremian will kick it off to the little guy Howard Stevens down on the goal line now. And coming up on the ball, Don McCauley, I believe, fumbles the ball, goes back, recovers, comes ahead to the 20, to the 25, and Wacky got it in between the 25 and the 30-yard line, held on to the football at about the 29. The Bruce Elia was among others, and we may have a penalty here. It looked like the preliminary call was face masking, you know, snapping on that guard that in front of the mask and pulling the man down, and that's exactly what did happen, so the Colts get better field position to work with. In this half of the ball game, uh, the Colts had the ball uh, at the road 18, and a pass to Olds took them out to the 33. They got it out to the 34 and had to kick it away. The next time the Colts had the ball, they couldn't move it. In truth, they lost yardage and had to kick it away. Now here is the third time that the Colts have had the football in this third quarter, and the ball is resting at the Baltimore Colts 33. Get only five yards because there wasn't a flagrant violation on the face pass. 57 in the third quarter. Standard pro set backfield behind Burt Jones, waiting for the takeaway. Jones gives to Mitchell. Into the middle, it doesn't give. He's uh, maybe got two yards. As the Miami Dolphin defensive unit, smart, agile, and able, just to shut off any kind of a running route that Mitchell might be able to enjoy. He picks up maybe two. Call it second down eight, Baltimore, at their own 35. After the ball game, we have the offensive and defensive players of the week for the Colts, and we'll announce them during the locker room report right after this afternoon's game. Is Miami gaining one of the other little one of the other little shades that indicates that maybe that great football player, Mr. Mo, Mo Metum, is swinging a bit to Miami. It's what they're able to do to Baltimore on first down. Back to throw with Jones. He fires to the sideline. Caught by Dowdy and out of bounds at the Baltimore 42-yard line. It is not a first down. You got about eight. Miami, of course, gains more confidence the, the better they play defensively. And as Chuck says, shutting them off on first down when they come up second and eight, second and nine. And Miami comes up second and five, second and four. The Lions are leading the ball game. The reason for the lead, 7 nothing Miami. It is third down at about a yard, Baltimore at the Baltimore 42. Dowdy wide to the right side. Double tight ends are on there now with uh, Don McCauley and Bill Olds, the setbacks behind quarterback Jones. Waiting for the takeaway, Burke spins, hands to McCauley, sweeping the right side, makes the cut. He is, I don't know, he's close to it. He may have first down yardage. He's very close, but he may not be quite far enough upfield. He's within about a yard of it and racing up to make the tackle. Charlie Babb and also in the tackle, it looks like Jarris White is there. And McCauley's attempted sweep of the right end did not get a first down. And this is not the spot of the field, uh, anywhere you want to take a shot at it. Well, we'll measure, Chuck. Pat Haggerty, the referee, calling for the six, but it looks like like he's almost a yard short from here, and we've got a pretty good look at it. Now, wouldn't that be embarrassing if they measure and he's got a first down? (laughs) Then all I can say is they got a crooked field. Now, he's missed it by considerable. Fourth down coming for the Baltimore Colts at their own 32. Beavers in the stands are saying go, 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 but uh, no, they wouldn't do that. Well, I see Jake Scott back to return the punt. I wonder what happened to Matt Moore. He's been doing a sensational job, and here he comes right now. He's coming on field, and they have two of them back there to help out Charlie Babb. Goes back there with Matt Moore. Moore has been a very, very excellent punt return man for the Dolphins this afternoon, and his returns have proved, you know, kind of tough on the Baltimore Colts. 
as the Dolphins lead it to 7-0 with a minute and four seconds remaining in the third quarter. Here is David Lee's punt. To Charlie Babb or Nat Moore waiting for that snap. Stan White, the signal caller, looking over. Now we're about ready to go. Here comes the snap and the punt. David Lee hits a beautiful, booming, deep spiral. Back goes Nat Moore inside the 10. He's got it at 10, laterally along that 10. Makes the shot, goes outside, sweeps through a host of tacklers, and is pulled off his pin at about the 19-yard line by Bob Pratt. And a flag goes down. Boy, that fellow Moore made a cut and came through. It looked like three of the Baltimore Colt tacklers, and then uh, Pratt got there and yanked him off his pin. More wide receivers from Florida, and uh, there's a penalty flag, and uh, it's a face mask uh, fly. So they're even in that area. Face masking against the Baltimore Colts, so now, uh, you know, the very well disciplined, uh, experienced uh, uh, Miami Dolphins are playing just a lot better football right now than are the young and inexperienced Baltimore Colts. First down, Miami, and the ball is spotted at the Miami 23 rather than at the 18. Wide to the left side, out on the right side is Twilly. Split backfield, no man behind quarterback Don Strzok. He is uh, still uh, barking signals as a Miami quarterback. The takeaway, he got busted play, running out to his left comes Strzok. He gets a little bit of a block and then gets hit and hit hard by Nelson Muncy, John Dutton, Joe Airman, and Stan White. And Strzok is able to take that punishment at about the 27-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. Strzok's a lanky kind of a guy, 6'5". Uh, that's the first real shot they've had him. He weighs about 220. Well, he's got a 7 to nothing lead, has Strzok and the Dolphins, and we're down to about the final play. We're not going to get another play in the third quarter. It's going to be over before the Dolphins can move the football again. And uh, there goes the gun. And that's the end of the third quarter with our score. Miami 7, Baltimore nothing. Alabama halfback Willie Shelby and uh, three other persons were slightly injured Sunday in a two-car collision on Alabama 11. That's near Tuscaloosa. A highway Patrol spokesman said Shelby, a senior in the Crimson Tide Southeastern Conference champion team, was bruised a little and maybe cut on one leg, but it shouldn't affect him for the Sugar Bowl. Shelby was not hospitalized and did not go to a doctor. The two other persons were taken to a Tuscaloosa hospital where they were treated and released. Identities of others in the accident were not released. Alabama faces Penn State in the Sugar Bowl December 31st in New Orleans. Here's the final score in the National Football League. The Buffalo Bills have beaten the New England Patriots today by a score of 34-14. to The Cardinals have hit again in the third period against Chicago. Bakken's 29-yard field goal in the third quarter. Score now, St. Louis Cardinals 20, Chicago Bears nothing. Well, right now we get to the fourth quarter in Baltimore with the Dolphins leading by a count of 7 to nothing. It'll be second and six, Miami at their own 27. And the Dolphins, who shut out the Bills 21 to nothing through the first half last week, have shut the Baltimore Colts out through three quarters this afternoon. And this is a Colt football team that has been averaging 29-plus points per game. And the Dolphins have cold shut them out. The Colts have not even come close to scoring on Miami. Their only effort was a 30-yard field goal by Linhart, and that was not good. Second down, six Miami at the Miami 27-yard line. Solomon is set out. No, it's Nat Moore. Wide to the right side and fully the other way. Nottingham and Morris set back behind Strzok. Waiting for the takeaway he's got. He gives to Morris on a draw. Morris knifes his way ahead for maybe a yard. He just kind of stuttered around waiting for daylight to open. It didn't get there because the fellow who got there to plug it up was John Dutton. The gain is uh, held to about a yard. Third down, five. Now Miami at the 28. Rick Bolt coming into the game, Chuck, and he hasn't yeah. been in a serious down, I guess, for a long time for Chayansky. Well, Chayansky drops out, and uh, Rick Bolt has come on in, replacing Ro Ray Oldham, whose knee might be bothering him a good little bit. Split backfield between Bulas and Seifel, a quarterback, uh, Don Strzok, uh, waiting for the snap from Langer. Still waiting. He's got it. A straight drop on the reverse to Bulas around his left end. Bulash is up to the 30 and out of bounds at about the 33-yard line, and he might have first down yardage. He's going to be very close to it if he didn't make it. A 
reverse and a sweep of the left end by Bulash, and he appears to have a first down. down at the uh, Dolphin 34-yard uh, line, leading by a score of 7-0. The second half of the ball game has been completely dominated by the Dolphins. Split backfield to give to Morris, starts to the right side, makes the cut, and down he goes to the 35-yard line, and here's a penalty flag thrown into a pileup from 15 yards downfield. And that was by field judge Pat Millette, who threw the flag, and I don't know what it's all about. Jim Chayunsky gets tackle credit. Holding against be one of the very few mistakes the Dolphins have made this afternoon with the exception of a few uh, miscalculations and misses on the snap between quarterback rookie Don Strzok and center Langer. That's right, they haven't fumbled. They intercept, they fumble one time back into the hands of the fumbler who made a substantial gain out of it and had more than one interception early in the game. Now, first down and 20 for the Miami Dolphins. The ball spotted at their 24-yard line as Morris and Nottingham set in a setback behind Strzok. Matt Moore wide to the right, fully wide to the left. Miami leads at 7 and nothing. And Strzok uh, waiting for the snap turn. Gives to Morris left side. Burst through a hole and get hit. And stays on his feet, crossing the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Bruce Laird hit him, and Morris took the hit and continued until Chayunsky pulled him down at about the 32 or 3. Bring up a second down, about 11 for the Dolphins. At their own 33-yard line. Well, now let's make it the 32. Twilly and Matt Moore are coming out wide to the right side of the Miami set at the moment, which is a standard pro set with Morris and uh, Nottingham shoulder to shoulder in the backfield. Waiting for the snap from Langer to quarterback Strzok. He's got, he fakes, he hands on a reverse to Matt Moore around his own left side. He is up to the 35, to the 40, and is hit crossing the 40-yard line and taken down by a gang of cold tacklers led by Nelson Muncy. Well, the Dolphins have been full of, uh, of reverses and wide-end sweeps today against the Baltimore Colts. They're going to spot it bent somewhere around the 40, right on the 40, as a matter of fact. And that brings up third down at about four. And, of course, as the clock ticks away, it's not yet a factor, but this ball control, they can take seven or eight minutes to and mark the long way. And just seconds ago, they were first and 20, and now they're third and four at the 40. Fully is wide right. Nottingham and uh, Morris set back, turn, give the Nottingham straight ahead, stop and burst out of it and came forward another yard or two. He's very close to first down yardage at about the 44-yard line. This will require a measurement, and we just don't know. But Nottingham was plugged up, rolled off the pile, and came forward another two or three. They needed four to get a first down. They had to get just about out to the 44. And let's see whether or not they have made it. Any part of the football will give it to them. They put the sticks down, and now they'll stretch the chain. But I don't believe he's got it. I don't believe he has it. He's missed by six. Now, you, you would kick it, wouldn't you? Here comes Stifle. He's not a runner. Usually. If I know Shuler, they will kick him. Okay. One of the things you don't fool with is a chance with a championship. You just don't gamble unless you're behind. Stifle is on field to punt. Downfield, Howard Stevens is waiting. Marshall Johnson is back there with him. Rick Volk is back pedaling. Stifle, who has uh, done a very good job putting for the Dolphins for quite a few seasons, has continued his effective putting again this afternoon. He missed only one. Waiting for the snap. There goes the snap. Here's the Stifle's punt. He hits a fine, high spiral deep into Baltimore territory. Stevens, fair catch requested by Howard at about the 13, 14-yard line. And the Colts go to work deep in their own backyard. There is a timeout here in Baltimore. We'll be back in one minute. Ball game over at New York. Rookie Rondy Colbert returned a third quarter punt of 65 yards for TD. And Doug Coder then reeled off a 46-yard scoring run the next time the New York got the ball as the Giants snapped the five-game losing streak with a 28-14 win over the New Orleans Saints. Now, Colbert's punt return for the score was the first by a Giant 
since 1970, and Coder's TD jaunt was the longest from scrimmage this season by the 4-9 Giants. It was a sixth straight loss from the 11th setback in 13 games for New Orleans. Final again, Giants 28 and Saints 14. In the American Football Conference, uh, Pittsburgh, of course, already sewed up the Central Division. Cincinnati will have the wild card. Still a battle in the East, though, between these two clubs, Miami and Baltimore. Well, we're 12 minutes, 11 seconds away from the end of the fourth quarter with the Dolphins leading the Baltimore Colts 7-0. The second half of the ball game, the Miami defense has completely, absolutely shut off the Baltimore Colts. have given them a one first down. They haven't been able to do a thing. Now it's Carr and Dowdy wide to the left side of the set. We've got Bill Olds and Mitchell at setback behind the quarterback. The give goes to no one. Play action fake. He wants to throw. Dumps the screen to Olds at the 10. Olds to the 15. And up to the 20 yard. A fumble. And I don't know what happened to it. They rule it dead at the 20 yard line. Olds lost control of it. And then Bill Olds recovered control of it at the 20 yard line. They made six. Boy, they need a first down. They got to get it out of there because if they give the ball back, they're forced to punt with an inability to make a first down here. Miami gets the kind of position that can work them close enough for a premium field goal. And with 11.43 and the way this team can control the ball, Baltimore can't afford that. All ready to go with a second and four at the 20-yard line. Split backfield. Nobody behind quarterback Jones. Car wide left, Dowdy wide right. Here's the gift to Mitchell into the middle. He goes. He's got yardage. And it's up over the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Goes Lydell Mitchell. That time, Charlie Babb made the tackle. And assisting him was Jake Scott. And the Colts do get their second first down of this half. in the second half, the Baltimore Colts lost their quarterback, Burt Jones, and Marty Domres was rushed into the gap, and he kept the ball on the ground, and the Colts ran it. Well, let's see what they're doing now. First down at the Baltimore 28. High formation, old front man, Lydell is the second man. Jones fakes, rolls back, wants to throw, fires outside, and it is caught, and out of bounds goes Glenn Dowdy at the 38-yard line of the Colts, and that's close to another first down. He drilled it, so he didn't, again, uh, you wonder if he's hurting. I know he's hurting, but it's not affecting his delivery. It is a first down, as the pattern run by Dowdy was right at the post, and he got the first down. Now, Cole ball first down at their 38-yard line. They've come uh, from their own 14 to their own 38 on uh, three plays. Dowdy coming out wide to the left side of the set. Roger Carr the other way. The Colts look at an eye, present an eye formation against the Miami Dolphins right now. First and 10 at the Baltimore 38. Trailing 7-0. Jones rolls slightly to his left. Wants the throw. Fires down the middle. It is caught by Raymond Chester at about the Baltimore 46-yard line. Chester peels back on what they used to call 100 years ago kind of a button hook. <laughs> it's been that long. <laughs> 46-yard line. Third, second down and two. Well, a final uh, New York Giants defeat New Orleans, uh, 28 to nothing, uh, 28 to 14. Excuse me, that's the final score. The Giants 28, New Orleans 14 is the final score. Second down two at the Colt 46. Split backfield. Nobody behind Burt Jones. Dowdy to the right side of the set. The gift to light out. He's got first down at about the Baltimore 49 as he gallops straight ahead. Mitchell picks up a first down at the Baltimore Colts 49-yard line on the Colts now. Mount a little bit of an offensive threat that begins to get this ball clock livened up in Baltimore. Trailing Miami, 7 to nothing. Time, 9.50 remaining. First down, Baltimore at their own 49. And kind of a mist is beginning to settle in over Memorial Stadium, and it's getting a little bit on the cooler side, but nobody in this ballpark minds. They're standing Better than 60,000. Well, just about 60, actually, in the ballpark. First and 10 at the 49. Double flankers wide to the left side. Jones yanks fakes, wants to throw a deep drop set up by Jones. Lobs it to screen to Bill Olds. He drops the football at about the Baltimore 49. They were trying to set a screen for Bill Olds, and he dropped the football. Second down, 10 Baltimore at their own 49. 
he caught the ball. The Miamis were coming at him, and uh, we'd have had no, no better than I think we have now, which is second and ten. He was five yards behind the scrimmage line when he dropped the ball. Here's another final score. The Cleveland Browns, who had, uh, you know, all sorts of difficulty beginning this year, have a wall of the Kansas City Chiefs, 40 to 14. That is a final. Well, this cold drive started on their own 14. It's now out to the 49 with a second down and 10. Dowdy, wide right, car wide left, standard pro set backfield. Miami leading by a count of 7 to nothing with 9.23 remaining. Jones is back to throw pressure. He's running away from pressure with the middle linebacker. Powell fires upfield. It is incomplete and almost intercepted by Charlie Babb. He was intending for Raymond Chester. And Chester is griping to the official about interference. He claims he's being held, and it'll be third down and 10 at the 49-yard line, and Jones is having a difficult day against a determined Miami defense. Now, blitzed on that one, got after him and forced the bad pass. Probably a, an ill-conceived attempt. He shouldn't have thrown the ball, really. And he was lucky Bab couldn't handle it. down and 10, and this might be the play of this ball game. Uh, you never know. Third and 10 at the 49, and Jones takes it away. He wants to throw. Pressure is coming. Rolls right. Sets and fires. Caught by Lydell Mitchell. He's got a first down inside the Miami 40. Mitchell caught it at the Miami 38. Great play by Mitchell, who spun immediately upon the reception of the ball and got away from somebody who hit him. It wouldn't have been a first down had he not made that move, and that got him as far as a 38 first down. Big play. Baltimore at the Miami 38-yard line. In the first half of the ball game, they got deep enough for Linhart to try a 30-yard field goal, and Tony missed it. Now they have first down at the Miami 38. 8.43 remaining. Dowdy wide right, car wide left. Mitchell and uh, Bill Olds the setbacks to turn the gift to Mitchell into the middle. He hits straight ahead, bangs his way inside the Miami 35 to about the 34-yard line before Bob Matheson is able to stack him up. Quick pick up a four by the tough running man from Penn State, Lydell Mitchell. Second down six now at the Miami 34. I think they're going to tell you when this one's over, Chuck, it's been the toughest hitting game of the year. Because the, the battle in the trenches there is unreal. It really has been a tough day as both defenses have played exceptionally well. And in that Miami is leading 7 to nothing. I guess you have to say that the Miami defense has certainly played better than Baltimore. Second down, six at the Miami 34. Far wide right, Dowdy wide left. Jones with a split backfield. The takeaway by Burke, no fake. Deep drop, lost the throw, dumps it off to Mitchell. Mitchell's got a 35, 30. Down to the 25, and he's inside the Miami 25 and taken down at about the 23. Jake Scott, among others, made the tackle. Roan was also there. Mitchell caught it, put a move on a defender, and went flying downfield to the Miami 23, first down. drive starting on their 14-yard line has now come all the way down to the Miami Dolphin 23. And Jones brings them out, sending Carr wide to the right side, Dowdy to the left side. Again, it's Mitchell and Bill Olds to set back behind the gutty kid from LSU, waiting for the takeaway by Berg. Jones has, rolls to his left, wants to throw, sets and fires, caught by Chester at the 15, and down he goes at about the 11. Baltimore is on fire. As Chester has just caught a pass at the Miami 11-yard line. Curtis Johnson made the tackle with 6.45 remaining. They've come 75 yards, 11 to go to get a tie, if they can take the point. And Jimmy Kennedy replaces Roger Carr on first and 10 at the 11. Right end. Roger Carr out of the ball game. Chester and Jimmy Kennedy of the tight end. Dowdy wide to the right side. They go to a double wing. Olds on one end of the wing and Dowdy on the other end. The man behind the quarterback is Lydell Mitchell. Waiting for the takeaway by Bird up to dial from 11. Pitch out to Mitchell. Swings to his right cut. To the 10. Down to the 6-yard line goes Lydell Mitchell. A fine run and a good tackle by Jake Scott. The Colts can make a first down without scoring. They're at the Dolphin 6-yard line. Second down and 5. Taylor, the blockers on the right side, blasted it out. 
And look at the Baltimore Colts crowd. They are here this afternoon, hoping against hope the Colts are able to do it. They are now within six yards of tying the football game. Dowdy wide right. They go to the double wing. Dowdy's the wing on the right side. Bill Olds the wing on the left side. Mitchell the only man behind the quarterback. Second and five at the Miami six. Waiting for Jones. The takeaway. Pitch out to Mitchell to the right side. Swinging back to the five, to the two, and he is in for the touchdown. Oh, my. He scores. And in touchdowns, they have tied the game. In points, it remains for Tony Linhart to do that. George Coons and Bob Pratt. Coons just blasted over the Miami defenders. Linhart will try the point after. Marty Dom is the holder. 5.30 remaining. It is Miami 7, Baltimore 6. We're waiting. Shot, kick in the air. Kick is good. Scored Cleveland, Greg Pruitt darted for 214 yards today and three touchdowns and passed the 1,000 yard rushing mark for the season as the Cleveland Browns overwhelmed the Kansas City Chiefs 40 to 14. A little halfback carried 26 times and scored on runs of 10, 3, and 14 yards to run his season's total of 1,030 with one game to go. He joined Jim Brown and Leroy Kelly as the only Brown runners to reach that level before 44,368 fans who gave him a full minute's applause when he broke the mark on his 14-yard touchdown run midway in the fourth period. The victory was the Browns' third all at home against 10 defeats and dropped the crippled Chiefs, who were shut out until the final 10 minutes to 5-8. and eight. Pruitt scored in the last minute of the fourth period after the Browns recovered a bad center snap on a field goal attempt on their own 44. Final score again, Browns 40, Chiefs 14. Well, a jam packed Memorial Stadium that saw their club unable to score through three quarters of the football game have just seen the young Colts mount a drive of 86 yards and 13 plays, culminated by a six yard sweep of right end by Mitchell. It's a 7 7 tie. Linhart hits that football. He's got it hit pretty good. Matt Moore coming up to about the 12. Moore down the far sideline, 20, 25, 30. And he is now reversed along the 30 yard line. Coming out of the open, he is hit and pulled down at the 30 yard line by the Baltimore Colts. Don McCauley was there and knifed him down at about the 30. Moore, who has been just, I'll tell you, he has been a tough man to handle in returns this afternoon. Almost did it again. This crowd on the feet bent for that cry of defense, defense, defense. What a play McCauley made, Chuck. He was cutting for the wide open spaces. Had a lot of room on this side, and Mac didn't let him get around the corner. Well, we'll watch, we'll watch Mercury Morris and Nottingham as setbacks behind rookie quarterback Don Strzok, waiting for the takeaway. Long count by Strzok. He's got it, wants to throw on first down. Looks to find a receiver, jumps his penalty marker, drops as Nottingham takes the screen up to the 35-37 yard line. A flag is dropped back at the line of scrimmage. Jim Chayunsky made the tackle for Baltimore. A lot of times it's a hole on a play like that, and it is uh, on a screen. And that's what they were doing. Miami holding, and the Colts will take it back. And right now, right now, Vince, for WJEJ in Hagerstown, Maryland, and all of our network stations, we'll pause now for station identification. This is the Metro Media Baltimore Colts Football Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Well, we're looking in at one of the sites that hasn't been seen in Baltimore 
for some time, but you've got a jam-packed stadium. They're in this ball game as much as their football team. Two good football teams, and what a show they've given us today in Baltimore. After the penalty on the holding, it's first and 20 at the Miami 20. Strzok yanks it away, gives it to Morris, the sweep of his left hand, turns the corner, is up to 25, and up to the 30-yard line goes Morris before he is finally hit and held, and Stan White did the hitting and the holding, a good tackle by Stan. A left uh, end sweep by Merck Morris, picks up 10 quick ones, and it's second and 10 for the Dolphins at their own 30. 4.50 left in the ball game. Morris is... Uh, and Twilly's out. Okay. Morris is out now. And we've got uh, into the ball game now Freddie Solomon, also Boulash, I believe, and Larry Seipel. And Matt Moore and the Solomon come wide to the right side of the set. Seipel is split off as the left end. Boulash, the only man behind the quarterback, Don Strock, second and ten at the Miami 30. Waiting for the takeaway by Strock. He's got a straight drop. He wants to throw. Looks to find a receiver. Fires it down the middle. It's going to be caught by Solomon at the 45, and he ducks ahead to the 47-yard line. Freddie Solomon made a heck of a catch on a return route. Jackie Wallace made the tackle. The Dolphins have a first down at their own 47. Solomon has great deep speed, Chuck, and uh, I'm sure the defender is concerned about the deep pass rather than protecting against the first down pass, which Freddie ran. And again, a defensive front four that leads the National Football League and Sachs has not been able to get to the quarterback today. Hand off to Mercury, swings the left side, makes the cut and gets a hit and they may have run over. Big pile up at the 45-yard line. Baltimore may have recovered. Wait for the sign from the official. They're still battling down there. There has been no sign yet, but the fumble has been recovered at the 45-yard line. We wait to determine possession. Fred Cook at the Baltimore. Baltimore recovered. Recovered the fumble. He's laying on the ball. There is a timeout here in Baltimore with a score. The Dolphins, seven, and the Colts, seven. Well, they're going wild with the Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. They haven't had a real good ball club since the heyday of Johnny Unitas, and they had some real fine ball clubs then back in the 1960s. But there's been uh, dark days since then, but they're back this year with young Burt Jones and company. They're doing real well. Here's some finals. At Atlanta, rookie quarterback Steve Burkowski passed for 305 yards today and two TDs. And the Atlanta Falcons, in an accustomed favorites role, played daring offense while defeating the San Francisco 49ers 31-9. The teams were locked in a scoreless duel until late in the second period. So once Burkowski found the range, the Falcons were almost unstoppable. Burkowski threw a 20-yard touchdown pass to Alfred Jenkins. It was barely a minute left in the second period. Then connected with Jenkins again on a 63-yard TD play late in the third period. So the final there, the Falcons win over the 49ers easily, 31-9. to The offensive and defensive players picked after the game will announce their picks during the locker room report. And both Colts receive gift certificates from hamburgers. Hamburgers, if you're going to address, you might as well do it right. Chuck, I think Freddie Scott, Freddie uh, Cook was laying on the ball with it under his back. down Baltimore at the 46-yard line after Fred Cook recovered Mercury Morris has fumbled Dowdy in motion the pitch out to Mitchell the sweep of his left end one block up to a down a penalty flag goes down as Mitchell is roped down right along the line of scrimmage and the point I wanted to make a moment ago then is that you shouldn't bite the hand that feeds you and I'm well aware of that but television took a timeout right after Fred Cook recovered that fumble when the Colts may have had the Miami team a little bit off balance defensively and gave them a minute and a half to stand around and think about it All right. I think maybe something should be done about those kind of things. That's when maybe you can strike while the iron is hot, and you just might be able to take advantage of it. Well, on the other hand, they'll, they'll probably say that it's the defensive team coming in. It isn't if it were old-time college football or old-time pro football where the same team had to stay on the field. So maybe that's the way they justify it. But it's a pretty good hand that feeds us. And as you say, we don't want to fight too hard yeah, on the hand. That's true. But I'll tell you something. You know, they can... Uh, you know, you can pick another time for it. You know, after the first offensive play, let's call timeout. You know, 15-yard penalty though for slipping while we were editorial. And it's now 25, first and 25, back at the 30-yard line. 
behind Jones, yanks it away, a straight drop, he wants to throw, looks to find a receiver, dumps it off to McCauley, McCauley is galloping up and leaps over a would-be tackler and comes down at the 35-yard line. And the gain is up to the Baltimore Colts 35-yard line, and the Colts now have uh, picked up four on that one. So it'll be second down, and they've got just about 21 to go. Time, 3.16, 3.15, and the clock is moving. And it's a 7-7 tie. Baltimore in possession at their own 35. Second down, about 21. They've got to get to the Miami 44 for a first down. McCauley alongside of Lydell Mitchell is set back to uh, Dally wide right, car wide left. Take away by Jones, wants to throw a deep drop, sets up, fires upfield. Here comes Lydell, and Lydell is, cannot make the catch. And whoo, my, the Colts really protest. Pass interference against linebacker Bob Matheson. And now a flag may be dropped against the Baltimore Colts. The Colts may have protested just a little bit too much. The man who dropped the flag over here is back judge Jim Poole. Uh, hold on a minute. Make it uh, line judge Bob Beeks dropped the uh, penalty flag and a personal foul against the Baltimore Colts. Yeah. Unsportsmanlike like conduct, I think, against Jones, who ran in to protest the call. The, the thing happened in front of the Colts bench, which uh, will incite the players on the field when everybody on the bench jumps up and down. And you look at the rerun, and he really looks like he was raked before he uh, touched the ball. Now back to the 20-yard line with this penalty. Well, when the Colts get back to the 14, they'll be back where they started their last touchdown drive. They call it on Jones, it says. Unsportsmanlike conduct is the call. And uh, the officials are right on top of this ball game. Don't want it to get out of hand, and they've made the... Uh, the ball game exceptionally well this afternoon. This is a game that has intense feelings in it, and Baltimore now is in possession back at the own 20. That's 36, and 36 yards, yards to go. Is exactly right. Car wide left, alley wide right. Jones fakes, rolls back, wants to throw, fires outside to Lydell Mitchell. Mitchell comes up to about the 20. There's another flag down over the far side of the field as Mitchell tries to run out of the screen up around the 30-yard line. The flag is dropped. the tackle that time and with the 243 remaining uh, this ball game now is deteriorating just a little bit these two clubs have played a whale of a football game right on through this afternoon and now with the fog settling in over more memorial stadium uh, perhaps uh, they're getting just a little bit too anxious about some of the things clipping against the baltimore colts and it's declined by the miami dolphins down comes up with a gang of yardage, and David Lee is the uh, punt return, uh, the putter on field, and the punt return team a trio. Jake's got Charlie Babb, and in the middle, a guy who has done just done nothing but a brilliant job of returning kickoff and punts today for the Miami Dolphins, Matt Moore. He's down around the 25-yard line of the Baltimore Colts, of the Miami Dolphins. Snap to David Lee, here comes his punt. He hits it good, and coming up on it is Matt Moore. Fair catch requested, and Moore makes it at the Miami 38. Good coverage by the Colts. Miami uh, is protecting the returner. Now it's up, it is now up to that vaunted defense of the Baltimore Colts. And uh, they have got more than a little bit of uh, work cut out for them. The offensive line of the Miami Dolphins, magnificent. They have not allowed their quarterback to be sacked one time today. First and 10, Miami at the 38-yard line. Split backfield, nobody behind Don Strock. He's got a clean, spotless white jersey. Hands it off to Nottingham, swings his left side, puts his head down, and John Dutton, it looked like, roped him down as he crossed the 40-yard line after a tough run of maybe four. Spot the ball at about the 41-yard line, and that's a gain of three. Second down and seven now for Miami at their own 41-yard line. And that clock, that timepiece down here on the scoreboard rolling relentlessly along. Wide to the left, fully to the right, Matt Moore. Slip backfield, nobody behind that quarterback, Don Strock, waiting for the takeaway. Strock gives it to Morris, left side, puts his head down and racked up right about at the line of scrimmage. He may have gotten a yard. Airman got there, and also Bruce Laird, and we may be right down to the two-minute warning, and that's exactly where we are. There's the two-minute warning with the score. The Miami Dolphins 7, the Baltimore Colts 7. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Well, we've had a number of 
sudden death games, overtime games this year. I think I've had three straight Sundays, it seems like. So we could have another one today with uh, the Miami Dolphins, something like 59 yards away from pay dirt. Of course, uh, your premium can kick that field goal from anywhere from 35 yards out. So they're sitting in a position at least for a field goal with two minutes to go. It's a lot of time in professional football, and they'll set things up, I'm sure, when time's back in. Detroit Lions really putting on the Minnesota Vikings today in the first period have scored two touchdowns. The first one was uh, covering 14 yards of the pass play. The other one from Smith to Smith, by the way. And the other touchdown uh, passed from Reed to Briscoe, covering just one yard. Extra point good on both attempts. And that's a correction on that. The uh, first pass was from Reed to Briscoe, one yard. The second one with a pass from Reed to Thompson, 46 yards. Detroit leads in the first period, 14-0. Well, nobody is going to go home complaining too much about this football game. Uh, so far, it has been everything a football fan could ask. Uh, for the Baltimore Troll fans here in Baltimore, it's been a nail-biter and an uphill battle back to get tied up by the Baltimore Colts. It's been a steady, uh, thoroughly professional performance by the Miami Dolphins, who are playing with a third-string quarterback. double wing right now to the Miami Dolphins waiting for the takeaway by uh, quarterback Don Strock. He's back and uh, back to rolling to his left now looking to find a receiver. Fire sets from the upfield. It is caught by Stifle and he is at the Baltimore Gold 42 yard line with what appears to be a first down without any difficulty. Stifle is there and a fine rollout by Don Strock and a perfect pass to Larry Stifle for a first down at the Baltimore Gold 42. 151. Your premier, of course, a great field goal kicker. Has missed a couple a day. Doesn't like the dirt. But uh, if he can move it a little closer, he'll get a chance to like the dirt. And Mercury Morris and Nottingham shoulder to shoulder in a standard pro set for the first down of the Baltimore 42. Waiting for a struck in motion. Twilly toward the Miami backfield to give goes to Nottingham. Swinging his left side. Turned the corner. Didn't go anywhere. Stan White was there. And White just wouldn't give an inch. And Miami now comes up second down. Still 10 at the Baltimore 42. Now they may give him a short yard on that. I think as we look at that football, better do the same thing. Second down and still about nine. The ball around the Baltimore 41. That fog coming in, Chuck, and the haze over the stadium makes it difficult to see the upper deck on the other side. Well, they send Seifel wide left, and here comes Nat Moore wide right along with Solomon. Bulosh, the only man behind Strock. Second down nine of the Baltimore 41, waiting for Strock's move. Quarterback snaps it away, a straight drop, wants to throw pressure coming, fires out of the pressure, and it's going to be incomplete. A trap of the ball at the Baltimore 31. There to cover was McLeod. I'll tell you, he really had to hurry the throw. It was Solomon, the intended receiver, and Freddie trapped the football. And the official right on the spot waved it off immediately. Third down, nine, Miami at the Baltimore 41. Time, a minute and seven seconds. The Dolphins, seven, the Colts, seven. How does this sound for a big play, huh? Mm -hmm. Freddie Cook made pressure uh, pay off, I think, in forcing Strzok to throw it quickly and underthrow Solomon. That right side tackle over there, Norm Evans and Freddie Cook have been having a good go round all day long, and Evans has done a masterful job of containing the one of the very best pass rushers the Colts have had as a defensive end since the days of a fellow named Gino Marchetti. Exactly. Well, they have uh, taken a little bit of a timeout here. The clock shows us a minute and seven seconds. It's the Miami Dolphins seven, the Baltimore Colts seven. A scoreless first half. Miami finally put seven on the board in the third quarter. The Colts equaled it with an 86-yard, 13-play drive in the fourth quarter. And uh, the, as they say, the issue is, is yet to be resolved, and the outcome is in doubt. Waiting for... Uh, as it so often happens, Vince, uh, you get in a tie situation like this, and of course, yes, there will be overtime if it ends this way. But so many football games today are decided by, I think, six of the eight overtime games played so far in the National Football League this year have been decided by a field goal. Well, we have uh, one of the premier people who decided the longest game ever played that way, and he may get the opportunity, Daryl Yepremian. Again, in a passing formation, Boulash is the only man behind quarterback Strzok. Colts now face third down nine Miami 
at the Baltimore 41, waiting for Strzok to take away a straight drop. He wants to throw. A little pressure coming. Rolls right, fires upfield. It's caught. And a penalty flag is being dropped back at the 45-yard line. The ball is caught at the Baltimore 30 by Freddie Solomon. And a penalty flag dropped back at about the 45. And it looks as though the flag will go against the Miami Dolphins. Your arm and leading the applause. Holding a foul. There's a personal foul. What they show us. Jim Langer may have been holding on the play. That's a guess, but uh, it'll nullify a Miami first down at the Baltimore 30. And they'll walk it off. They will walk it off against the Dolphins, and they're doing that right now. Bring it back to midfield, take it into the Miami 45, down to the Miami 44. Defense, defense, so third down and uh, 20, 20. Oh, it's against Langer. Chuck, about 23 yards to go. They've got at least 20, 23, 23, 24 yards to go. Third down at the ball at the Miami 44. Again, that same passing formation. Strock is back to throw. Looks to find Rolls to his right. Looks to find a receiver. They're going to get him. And Strock is down by Stan White. Or Mike Barnes. Excuse me. Mike Barnes. The quarterback struck at the Miami 33. 53 seconds to go. What a dramatic moment is the fog really now, Chuck. Becoming difficult to see the field as we get into overtime. 33 seconds to go on fourth down. Miles of yardage needed. Believe me, as Vince is telling you, the fog is rolling in at Memorial Stadium. Some of the upper deck patrons, I am sure, are having a little difficulty seeing. Here is Larry Seiple's punt. Howard Stevens is waiting at the Baltimore 32, waiting for the snap from center. Still waiting and waiting. Barnes has finally sacked that Miami quarterback, and what a time for a must sack. And the clock peeling along. Here comes the snap. Seiple hits it end over end. Howard Stevens back pedals to the Baltimore 25. He's got lateral along the 25, up to the 30, to the 35, 40, to the 45, 50, just in the Miami 48 yard line. Stevens is down. <laughs> and the Colts now will stop that clock with 18 seconds left. Broke it, Chuck. He still had a few people to pass, but he did trip as he crossed midfield and fell on the 48. Return of 23, 28 yards, 27 yards. At the 49-yard line, Baltimore, first and 10 at the Miami Dolphin 49. The return by Stevens. 18 seconds on the clock, and the fog is really rolling in and settling down here on the playing area at Memorial Stadium with 18 seconds left. Far wide left, Dowdy wide right. Jones uh, waiting for the snap from Mendenhall. He's got face, rolls back, wants to throw, looking to find a receiver. Fires down the gut, caught by, no, it's incomplete. Dowdy was there and uh, could not hold onto the ball at the Miami 28-yard line. Oh, what a shot. He had it and oh. couldn't hold it and is up limping. It'll be second down, still 10, Baltimore at the Miami 49. Great hit by the Dolphin defender. How true. Knock it out of his hands. But, oh, my. There you can see it. The field goal chance from there. It took six seconds to reel that playoff, and Baltimore is ready to go again. What an amazing picture, and what an afternoon of football in Baltimore. And now at the end of the regulation period, the Colts and the Dolphins in a 7-7 tie. Dowdy wide left, car wide right. And Jones again waiting for that snap from Mendenhall in motion. Dowdy toward his own backfield. A fake handoff rolling back to throw as Jones setting. Looks to find a receiver. Fires down the gut. It is incomplete again trying to hook it up with Glenn Dowdy. And Jake Scott was there to break up the play. An incomplete forward pass. And the Colts come up the third down at the 49 as they try desperately to get in field goal position for Tony Linhart. Now they almost have to go for the touchdown. Well, they do have a timeout. They have their timeouts left but seven seconds it'll take them that long almost to, to run the play so i don't know whether they'd have time chuck to kick the field goal even if they complete a deep pass it would be very difficult to think that they would right now and if they run that sideline pattern with about a second or two yeah they might get it dowdy now coming wide right car or rather dowdy wide left car wide right third down 10 at the uh miami 49 
Jones yanked for the way, back to throw, a deep drop, looking, looking now, running out, running out of pressure. Jones is still in trouble, running upfield. Now stops, fires toward the end zone over everybody. Incomplete forward pass. He just threw it away. Jones hoping that it won't be called intentional grounding on that sit. The gun has sounded here at Memorial Stadium. That's the end of the regulation play with Baltimore and Miami tied 7-7. Seven seven. We'll be back with overtime in 60 seconds. We'll take a look while we have that 60-second break before the flip of the coin, and that's very, very important. Who wins that toss? First team, of course, that scores in the 15-minute period wins the ball game. Okay, Oakland has scored again. Uh, Banasak, uh, three-yard run, extra point good by Atlas Blanda. It's 13-3 to Oakland over Houston. That is in the second period. Now the uh, Cardinals, Peyton has, has run the ball 10 yards for a touchdown. The extra point block. Well, Vince, uh, we go to overtime here in Baltimore, and the Dolphins have won the toss and have elected to receive. Now, there have been eight overtime games so far this year, and uh, six of those eight overtime football games have been won by a field goal, and six times the team that won the toss lost the game. So we'll uh, figure Tony Linhart can kick it down deep into the end zone, and Miami will put it in play at the 20. Baltimore will hold them, get good field position after a punt, and then we'll go from there, maybe. Well, we've been involved in a few of these. Chuck, do you remember the... Uh, well, Shane, do you remember the playoff game? Is uh, asking if you remember this morning, because do you remember the famous game in New York? How we, true, I remember. That was quite an afternoon of football, and it was my great privilege. I shared the microphone that day with Chris Schenkel, and I did the first half of the game, and Schenkel the second half, and when the overtime period rolled around... For me to go to work again. The other time we got mixed up in an overtime ball game, I was working uh, the Green Bay Packer Baltimore Colts game, and that was a game that brought about those great big tall uprights that you now see because the fellow named Chandler kicked one that a lot of us believe today was not good. And uh, they're the only two in which the Colts have been involved in the many years they've been playing this game. So they'll kick it off, Tony Lindhart kicking into the closed end of the stadium, which means that Miami. Uh, will, of course, run into the open end where both teams have scored in the 7-7 tie this afternoon. I guess if you're a perfectionist, Vince, if you're the kind of a fellow who knows everything there is to know about football, you can probably find a lot of faults with this ball game. But I'm a scoreboard reader. Yeah. And when I see two football teams play four quarters of football and they're still tied, I got to figure here are two pretty good ball clubs that are doing their job as best they can and, uh, and, and are rewarded by being in a tie situation. And I think the, the Dolphins and the Colts are just that way. Two very good football teams, and at the end of the four, four periods, they couldn't figure out which one was better. So here we go to overtime to try and figure that out. Well, Miami's shown an awful lot of heart getting itself together with so many injuries. Baltimore's youth has played with great poise, and I think it's been a great game. Hubert Ginn and Matt Moore are waiting on the goal line. Linhard desperately wants a good kickoff. He's up for the ball. Swings a leg. He's hit a good sailor coming down at the Miami 10, bounces toward Ginn at the 8, off to the 10 to the 15, 20. Now the 25, to the 30, and up to the 35-yard line, and over it goes Hubert Ginn. Again, another excellent return by the return team of the Miami Dolphins, and Hubert Ginn was the ball carrier, another former Baltimore Colts. And Dave Pear made the tackle, so Miami now has a first down, and the ball spotted at the Miami 36. First team that scores wins in overtime at Baltimore. We play a 15-minute period. Score left. Matt Moore splits to the left side, flank to the right side, fully. And the takeaway by Strzok, the give goes to, a, it looks like Benny Malone cutting into the hole up over the 40 to about the 42-yard line. And Steve White made the stopping tackle. And it turns out not to be Malone, but Mercury Morris again. Got to look at one of the numbers, which is a two, and Morris wears two of them, and Malone has a 32. Yeah, the ball is spotted up there at the 42-yard line. So there's a gain of some six yards on the first carry by Mercury Morris, second down and four. And again, Morris and Nottingham. As Brock turns, gives to Morris into the middle. He goes up over the 45, still on his feet at about the 49-yard line as Merck Morris just booming it straight ahead. And the Dolphins have run it from their 36 to their 49 and have a first down. Laird is credited with tackle, and Morris has done more inside running today, uh, Vince, than I've seen him doing sometimes. That's right. 
indicating that his traction can be better than that than trying to get outside. He has a thing about AstroTurf. He loves to run outside, but on the dirt field, he'll run inside. First down at the Miami 49, Nottingham and Morris behind quarterback Strzok. We're in overtime in Baltimore. Seven Strzok wants to throw a shallow drop looking, can't find it. Now fires to the outside, way over the head of everybody. His intended receiver was Nat Moore, and he threw it away rather wide. Second down, 10 Miami at their own 49. You know, the, the pressure hasn't even gotten close very often, which is an indication of the, the excellent job the Miami offensive line has done. Baltimore has pressured passes this year relentlessly, leads the league in sacks. 56 sacks now, I guess it is, in this house. Yes, and, uh, 56 is right there. But they haven't gotten near Strzok off. Now, second down, 10 still at the Miami 49. They present a split backfield, no man directly behind quarterback Strzok a second and ten. A takeaway by Strzok. He went on the draw. He gives it to Bullock. Down the middle goes Blue, and he has hit it about the Baltimore 47 or 8-yard line. It's taken down by Jim Chayunsky. And down on the bottom, Joe, or bottom of the pile, Joe Airman. And Miami keeps shuttling two and three players at a time. The ball is spotted at the Baltimore Colt 47-yard line. That's the game of some four. Third down and six, and here's one of those great big plays for the Baltimore Colts defensive unit. Strzok brings him out. He's got Larry Seifel. He's got Norm Bulon set in behind him. He's got Solomon to one side, the left, and to the other side, it's uh, Matt Moore, all ready to go, waiting for takeaway. Strzok wants to throw a straight drop. Sets up, fires down the middle. It is incomplete and almost intercepted by McLeod. He was intending for Norm Bulon. Miami, fourth down, six at the Colt 47. Defense has stopped them, and Larry Seifel is on field. 12.52 remaining in this overtime period. <laughs> well, Seifel don't run it now. Don't fool it. Fourth and five. They got to kick it from midfield. Seifel waiting, and Howard Stevens waiting at about the Baltimore 12-yard line. And that fog getting lower, the snap. Here comes Seifel's putt. He angles for the coffin corner. It looks pretty good. Stevens lets it go. It's going to go out at about the two-yard line. Oh, they walk it up to the three. Now drop it at the four. Oh, what a what weapon a he is. Yeah, he's a good one. He, they threw to him one time. He made an important first down for them in the regulation time. He's been a great punter, great professional. Larry Seifel, who uh, a long time ago came out of Kentucky nine years ago. The Baltimore Colts start deep in their own backyard, and it's at the four-yard line, 12.45 remaining. Now Miami's defense wants to try and throttle the cold offense and force good field position after the David Lee punt. Well, let's see what Baltimore can do about it. Dowdy in motion. The give goes for the man Mitchell straight ahead. He spills through the middle and jumps up to about the eight- or nine-yard line before Miami is able to contain him, and the Colts now show second down and five. Around their nine-yard line, Bob Matheson, among others, made the tackle. And coming to the sideline, Hurt, is Lydell Mitchell. Mitchell, a very, very important piece of uh, football ability, is down on his left knee at about the 16-yard line, and the injury is kind of hard for us to, to uh, guess at right now, but he's a very durable, hard-nosed kind of a pro, is Lydell Mitchell. And uh, has shaken off many, many hurts and now walks the sideline as if he's able to go right back in. Chuck, I don't think it's an ankle. He'd had a little ankle problem this week, but he's walking okay. Don McCauley moves in to take his slot on that backfield. Olds and McCauley. McCauley, the deep man on the eye. Olds, the front man on the eye. Second and five at the Baltimore nine. Car wide left, alley wide right. Jones yanks, gets to McCauley. McCauley spurts through the middle, head down, cracks over the 10 to about the 12-yard line. A good, determined run by Don McCauley, and here comes that guy, Mr. Mitchell, again, right back into that cold backfield. Nope, they, they won't let him go in. They say, get out of here, Lydell, and take a little bit of a breather. Well, they're going to measure for first down yardage, and our angle is not good enough to even make a guess, so we'll just wait and see. I figure they, they figure that if it's a third and short, they want McCauley in there anyway, so Lydell, sit down briefly. 
picked up the football, so obviously they missed by inches. So it'll be third down and inches, and the ball resting very close to the Baltimore 14. Check, look at this fog. I want to tell you, on the yeah. television picture, we do have a monitor. You can see it and penetrate it. Magic, that television. But in this stadium, I remind you of the, the 1953 game when George Taliaferro was the quarterback against the Rams in the last... You remember that? Sure, you remember yeah. that. Of a day. I remember seeing a Redskin football game and working it in this uh, ballpark. We had fog like this, and they shot from the upper deck with a television camera, and all you could see were the tops of the helmet right. bobbing along. And this is fun. Third down and inches at the 14. McCauley and Old settle in behind quarterback Burt Jones, waiting for the snap. Jones turns, gives to Old straight ahead. He's got first down and out to the 20 on his feet at the 24. And Jake Scott makes the tackle. Boy, somebody opened a hole, and that man exploded through it for first down yardage. They were figuring McCauley over the pile, and uh, he fooled them. The Taylor, David Taylor, with a block that sprung him. And it looks to me that that football's about at the 24, Vince. How do you see it? It's not that easy. <laughs> Here comes Dowdy wide to the right side. Carr is wide to the left side. Got McCauley and Lydell Mitchell a setback behind the quarterback Burt Jones. The takeaway Jones rolls a bit to his right, wants to throw, looks, now rolls out of pressure and is going to be caught and is taken down inside the 15 yard line. Great pressure from number 74, and that would be Randy Crowder. He pressured Jones, and then the tackle was thrown by Don Reese, the other tackle. So the inside men of the front four of Miami doing the job exerting pressure on Burt Jones, and the loss is back about to the 15. Now they have to throw, and this makes it very tough because they'll tee off. They'll have to swing it to somebody coming out of the backfield, I think. Now, oddly enough, the fog has lifted just a little bit. It's kind of rolling in and out like we're at sea. Far wide left, alley wide right, split backfield, nobody behind. Burt Jones, second and 19. Jones drops to the five, wants to throw. Men are rushing and throws up the middle. Caught by McCauley, and McCauley is held at about the 19-yard line on that Miami defense is tenacious and very skillful. Boy, how they diagnose those plays. And getting right to it, number 59 is Doug Swift. So the pass to McCauley is spotted down at about the 19. Third and 15. If you want to look at your monitor, they're trying to show them on television what that fog looks like rolling in over the stadium. The time, 10 minutes and 2 seconds, and overtime in Baltimore, 7-7 time, Miami and Ball and the Colts. Jones, third and 15 at the Baltimore 19, rolls to his left, wants to throw, looks to find a receiver, drills his pass, caught by Raymond Chester, and he goes out of bounds at about the 37. I'll take your word for it. Way to go, Raymond. Big play, first down. Colts have a first down. The ball spotted around the Baltimore 37. And for WCTR and Chestertown, Maryland, and all of our network stations, we'll pause now for space identification. This is the Metro Media Baltimore Colts Football Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Jones on a broken play, runs out to his right and gets nailed at the 30-yard line. The Colts busted the play. Charlie Babb read it and came in and knocked Jones down with a very solid tackle at the 30-yard line. So uh, lose six yards on a busted play. That is now second down 16 at the Colts 30-yard line. Well, on two successive plays on first down now, Jones has had his trouble. He got caught and nailed in his own backfield, trying to scramble and run out of trouble. Uh, the last uh, series before this, and on the, the first play in the uh, next series, he has been dropped for another big loss of six yards. Now he's got a second and 16 at the 30-yard line. Looking uh, to find some kind of help, he uh, takes the ball away, wants to throw a deep drop, sets up, fires, incomplete, I believe, or did he catch it at the 45-yard line? Carr comes up with the ball, and they say he caught it. It was right at, his, right at his feet, and Carr is credited with a catch. Great grab, and Don Shula is pretty close to him over there. He didn't move, so I'm sure it's a good call. 15 yards, third and two. Third down and two right now, and we can take a look at it on our replay here and see what kind of a catch. Oh, yes, a very good and legal catch, no doubt about it. That's the pictures don't lie. Baltimore. Holds and McCauley, 
the setback behind Bert Jones. Takeaway gift to Olds, left side, he jumps straight ahead. He may have first down yardage. He's very, very close at about the Baltimore 47. I believe they'll stop it and measure, but Olds is reasonably close unless they move that ball back from where I saw the uh, spot. And right now I'm having trouble seeing the football because Crowder is in my line of vision. But he's very close to it and uh, will be within inches if in truth he does not have it. At around the Baltimore 47. They stretch it, put it down. And Jones has first down. And the referee says you go right, kid. We're told that he made the first down by, well, let's say the length of my nose, but I really don't have yeah, that, that, that much. much. Right, that's right, man. <laughs> First down at the 46. No, no matter the outcome of this afternoon's football game, it's been a great season for Baltimore, and this has been one of their very best moments. 7-7 tie, eight minutes remaining of the overtime period. First down at the 46. Jones wants to throw. A deep drop. Set fires. Caught by Roger Carr on his feet at the Miami 45. Carr is there. Swift as he tried to make a move on a defender, and is taken down at the Miami 45-yard line. And that will bring up a second down and about a foot. Second down and about a foot right now for the Baltimore Colts. They're resting at the Miami 44. Waiting for the snap and an eye formation. The front man appears to be McCauley. The deep man is Lydell Mitchell in motion. Dowdy to turn the gift to Mitchell straight ahead. He is in for what looks like first down yardage around Miami 42. As the Colts ram it right down the throat of the Miami Dolphins and have a first down. Seven minutes remaining, Vince. First down, Baltimore at the Dolphin 43. And I've run out of room in the down charge, Vince. We're going to have to turn over another thing. Turn the page and... Turn a page of history, Chuck. Not that is. That way. Well, it has been an afternoon of just sensational football. High formation. First down at the Miami 43. The give to Lydell. Down the middle he goes to the Miami 40. Inside, maybe to the 39-yard line. And guys like Steve Powell help make the tackle. A gain of about four on the play. And it'll be Colt. Second down, six. The ball resting at the Miami 39. Second. Six, 23 remaining. Second and four. Second and six, rather, is about all you, you bargain for if you do that every time. And the time is not really a problem as long as they hold on. Tell you, they're fighting for a championship are the Colts and the Dolphins, and they're doing it the way championship teams should. I'll tell you, this is a fierce six draw. They are really two outstanding football teams playing as well as they know how. Again, out of the eye, here goes Dowdy in motion toward the backfield. The pitch out to Lydell out Mitchell makes a swing around the corner, down the 35, inside the 35, to about the 34. Goes Lydell Mitchell, and he'll be about a yard short of a first down. I want to tell you, when Coons and, and Chester and Collette on that side, you know, I think there's a better right side in the league, an offensive unit, blasting the way for Lydell to move. Five minutes and 31 seconds on the stadium clock in overtime in Baltimore. Miami 7 and Baltimore 7. Colts with a third down one at the Miami 34. As Jones and his teammates come up to that football with Bill Olds and Don McCauley, a setback behind the quarterback, Burt Jones, third down and about a yard. Waiting for the takeaway, the gift goes to McCauley, right side, first down, he's on his feet at the 25, down to the 21. Oh, man. Real good player, Mac. With the opportunity to perform, he can do it. He is a flasher. He should have made a yard on that play, Chuck. And he burst through and with great balance made 13 yards. At the Miami, at the Miami uh, 21 yard line, first down, Baltimore. High formation, McCauley the front man, Mitchell the second man. Jones turns, gives to Mitchell right side, and he is cracked coming across that 20. Maybe he got a yard or two, and the clock rolls right along to 4, 23, 22, and so on. And you look for Tony Linhardt. Where's Tony Linhardt in case they need him, in case they stall? 
Right now, they're relentless. Is he right warming up? Here, right down here with Mumford. Mumford just came up to him. Stevens has just come up to say a word. And Roger Carr has come to the sideline. The Colts now. We'll have all those big ends in there, all those big people block and try to push them back. Get as close as you can. Don't throw the ball. Second down and nine. Baltimore at the Miami 19. They go to a double wing. The only man behind the quarterback is Jones. Takeaway. Pitch out to Mitchell. Right side. Get the block inside the 20. Down to the 16-yard line goes Lydell Mitchell. As he tries to swing that right side and getting into it, number 59 for the uh, Miami Dolphins, who is linebacker Doug Swift made the tackle. The ball is spotted to 16. That is third down and five. You don't have to worry too much about the middle of the field because the hash marks are out so far. That there's really never an angle on a field goal as there used to be. Are they close enough right now? And everybody well, they, knows. Yeah, they'll bang it one more time. And Third down and five. And I find it awful tough Vince to sit in the chair right now. Right. Third down, five, double wing, only man behind quarterback is Mitchell in motion. Dowdy back toward the backfield. Jones on a broken play, wheels out around his left hand. He's running. Jones cuts down to the 16 to the 14-yard line, and he falls down there. A uh, healthy sure. Jones might have tried for more, Chuck, but that was a good, a good call to fall down. And here's the field goal team coming in, and they could win it with about a 20 plus 10, 30. 31-yard field goal, probably. Look around the sideline. All of the photographers of the world are up down there at the goal line. Jones comes to the sideline. He gets a standing ovation. Does the gutty kick from LSU. And now it all rests on the shoulders of a guy by the name of Tony Linhart. Jones Dom, Rays will, Dom Rays will be the holder. This will be spotted at the 21. It is a 31-yard field goal for perhaps all of the marbles. Waiting for the snap. There it is, spot, kick, it's in the air. I'll wait for the official. He did it! I don't have to tell you, Linhart is won the game. Can you believe it? He's never had to make a pressure field goal. He's never had to make a pressure kick, and he did it. Vince, I see things that I just can't believe. The, the pro football team are being mobbed by young football fans who have waited and waited and waited. And the Colts have beaten the Dolphins.